All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the RC Hangout. This is take number two because we did this, and uh, we turns out we were not perfect. And that's I think that's something we already knew. But this is the RC Hangout with Jeff and Eric. I'm Eric, and here with Jeff Ramos. And this is Jeff. yeah, we're we're here and we're podcasting, and it's it, it's happening, guys. Uh, it's, it's crazy. You know, hey, I want to just shout out my mom. You know, I, my mom always told me I could do big things, and who knew that it meant making an RC podcast with uh, one of my good friends that's a couple hours away. All right. And mom's got great taste too. Go Niners. Uh, okay. Let's, let's, let's not make this a, a that kind of podcast. Cause we're friends and oh, let's, let's, <laughs> let's not end this friendship on the, on the first podcast. Let's just say go RC. Oh yeah. 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 RC cars, toy yeah. cars, toy cars. Yeah. No one ever fights over toy cars, right? <laughs> no, there's never drama. Not at all. Oh man, no, one minute and we're already getting not. into those things. Well, anyways, yeah. So we're here. We're podcasting, and you know, I'm excited. This is uh, you know, I I don't necessarily think we have a direction with this podcast. I think it's just kind of, you know, it's in the name. It's the RC Hangout. It's a place where, you know, we'll have people on here. They might be famous. They might not be. They probably won't be. Um, you know, but. We're just going to have a, a hangout session and just hang out and talk RC and talk, talk you know, talk about life and how RC just makes life better. Uh-oh. I'm losing you, buddy. Uh-oh. I'm losing you. Oh, oh no. You're back. There we go. All right. Well, anyway, so. My kids. They're eating up my bandwidth. There we go. See, that's why I, I kick my kids out. Just kidding, everybody. <laughs> I'm only 26. I don't have any kids. That's right. Yeah. Don't need them. <laughs> but anyways, um, so, you know, let, 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 let's talk our seat. Our, there's a lot of st- stuff that's been happening over the last couple weeks. Um, but over all this, like, you, you seem to still have RC every day. Like, I, I see your live streams. You know, talk about that. Like, it seems like it, it kind of gets you out. Like, wh- what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, you, you got to try to keep sane during these crazy times we're in right now. And it's, it's unreal. Never in my life did I think I'd have to be walking around, just say, going into Costco and, and wearing a, a face covering or a mask. And uh, all this social distancing is crazy. So, yeah, I just, man, I had to get out of the house. So I just, you know, I grabbed one of my RCs and go take it for a walk. People love it when I'm out walking around. They're looking at it like, what the heck? You know, I just tell them, hey, I don't have a dog, so I, I, I just bring a rig with me. Yeah, that's, that's, cool. that's kind of funny. It. You're talking about the dogs. I, I, I feel like I'd probably, of, I'd probably I just... do a lot of good testing with it. Um, you know, uh, how many miles I can get out of a certain amount of milliamps on a battery. And uh, it's been interesting. That's for sure. And and that, that sounds like you, you figured that out, sir. Um, shameless plug here because uh, we both love Gen Zace batteries here and think that they're you know probably, <laughs> probably the best batteries out on the market if I if I do have to say so myself. I, I definitely haven't had an issue with them so far, not at all. Those little forty three hundred uh, Adventure Series have been unreal, man. The punch on those things have been night and day with the uh, other ones that I was running. Yeah, I know the the Adventure Series are, are pretty much what we use anytime that we set up an ASD booth. Uh, at any event is we just run, you know, I think we'll kill maybe two or three in a day. And it's, you know, that's putting eight hours on them, maybe if not more. Yeah. I get my, my lightweight, um, one nine wraith. I've gone five miles with it and it's still had a little, a little left at the end. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh man. Talking about. Uh, you know doing events with asd so for those of you that don't know you might be new thing but we are part of asd crawler so we we're at all these events with them and man i miss them so much like i i i miss setting up booths and it's funny because i think the last three events we so pro land by the fire last year um let's see obviously asd crawl crawl masters and crawl for cure i don't think i actually crawl for cure we got out for a little bit but I, I haven't ran an event as an event in probably over a year now. And that that's crazy oh, yeah. to me. But but I still love them. Like I'm still sitting here going like Proland by the fire. Let's do it. I'm I'm there with my brothers. ASD's gonna be there. We're doing whatever we're doing. We're setting up a booth. We're having a challenge course. 
and it is like the most fun like people people look at me and like oh like why do you go if you're not gonna run them and it's like like i don't know like it's just the camaraderie camaraderie i can't speak english today you know just being with my brothers and and being out there in the world and you know talking to people about the cause and talking to people you know about how they can help and it just creates such a good atmosphere and i think that's that's you know i give brandon and oscar all the credit for for planting the seed for that family environment you know and it's not just within asd crawlers like just because and this is why like it's kind of cool like to not be known as like the, the asd crawler guys is is because there is no like obviously we have our group that runs everything but at the same time there's like if you're there supporting and it doesn't mean financially if you're there on an event if you're there asking questions if you have an rc and you want to have a good time and sometimes it doesn't even have to be an rc you just have to be there you are asd family and that's yeah absolutely yeah and that, that's absolutely. why i love it. i mean i look forward to those uh, uh those events man seeing all the people from all the different areas that you get to see you know maybe once twice a year you know the reefs rc family when they come you know seeing those folks is that's amazing um crawl for a cure group they're always you know great to see um yeah man i miss that stuff this is this is crazy not being able to get out and and see all those faces like we're used to seeing yeah and it's crazy because like you said like in and you know, we're, it's such a big family that that's, that's been like my biggest takeaway from RC. Like, you know, I, I try to get some of my like friends from my outside world to, to kind of hop in it. And I don't think they understand it, but like, even like my sister, like my sister's always kind of, you know, seen me, you know, play around with toys or whatever it may be. And she's always like, you're such a, like such a dork. And then she comes out and she's like, okay, like, I get it. Like, it's not about the cars. It's, it's, you know, you're hanging out and, you know, you know, talking with this person then five minutes later when this other campsite talking to someone from you know from utah that came and drove all this way and it's she's like like i get it and it's, it's such a cool vibe yeah it, it, it's amazing how far people travel for this crazy little hobby that we're in it, 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 it's unbelievable now what's what's unbelievable. the furthest you've ever driven or ever gone to an event mm, probably down south for rc four-wheel drive west coast challenge okay I think okay that's the farthest so far yeah oh i was like that, that was cure. like three hours but you're like two and a half three hours north of me so <laughs> yeah it's a little farther for me yeah <laughs> yeah i think i think the furthest i've gone i think yeah per, per line by the fire um I'm, i was hoping this year was the year that we kind of got to do other things i was kind of hoping to hit up like uste um i was planning on going to to scale nationals obviously that fell apart uh, right. Thanks, Rona. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I was hoping to get to my first pro line by the fire this year, but uh, I had the tickets. I had to uh, request a, a refund. Um, they rescheduled it on Trisha's uh, birthday. So. Oh no. Yeah, so I'm not going to be able to make it. Well, and for those of you that don't know, my biggest sponsor, Trisha, my wife. It's her birthday that weekend, so I won't be able to make that. Yeah, I think we can all shout out those sponsors here because I know, I know, not necessarily a financial sponsor, but uh, you know, lets me kind of do my own thing. Sponsor, uh, Kendra. Uh, without them, most of us wouldn't be doing what we do, and that I think it takes a really strong woman to to be behind an RC nut job like us, because because it's a wild <laughs> ride. It's a real wild wild ride. Yeah, spending a lot of time out here in the uh, in the in the workshop yeah and not only uh, that like from them. not just like you know obviously i want to give a shout out to all the rc wives out there rc husbands because there's there's ladies that are big into this too that you know they might be the ones that get their spouse into it but you know to be an rc wife and be an asd lady like that's <laughs> that that's a that's double the the trouble because then you got to deal with all of us together and, and coordinating things in <laughs> in the event because let's be real like those raffles at AAC would not run nearly as smooth without the ASD ladies um, and they, no. their yeah their coordination efforts day of and day you know before are just ridiculous how much right. they do right absolutely yeah can't couldn't couldn't do it without them no way yep indeed Big time help. So let's see what other events. So the one that I'm kind of bummed about was uh, RCX, man. RCX was supposed to come back this year. 
Um, it was supposed to be with a bunch of other things, and I actually had tickets, and it's supposed to be going on starting today, actually, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't remember the dates on that, but I did hear it was coming back. Um, yeah, no, I just I just remember be being nice to uh, go see. Yeah, I just remember it being the day, like the the weekend after Kendra's graduation, because Kendra graduated yesterday, and I know that we had we had uh, purchased tickets for it, and mm. yeah, same thing. Obviously, her graduation got postponed, um, or it it was done virtually or whatever they want to call it. Um, so completely different, yeah. Yeah, and so and then they ended up moving it to November, and and that that's kind of the crazy thing to me is now everybody moved their events, but. And obviously, you know, the event, we go to different events in different areas, but everybody's event is in November or yeah, October, October, September. November. Yeah. And so that's kind of been a it's been a trip because I think it's going to definitely limit the number of events that I can go to. And I know I'm not the only one that's going to feel that way. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a tough choice to to see which events you, uh, we're all going to be able to make this year. It's uh it's a, yeah, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. Yeah, it's kind of it's Absolutely. it's kind of like I I'm I'm really interested to see the impact that it's going to have because like you're going to have your diehards for every event, you know. There's the guys that are like, "Oh, you have to go to this event this at this date." And you know, that's all over. Like you're going to have people that like for example, you're going to have your diehard Crawford Cure, you're going to have your diehard Pro Line by the Fire and you're going to have like uh, there's like Squirrel Fest in Oregon. That's going to be one that right. I, I I don't know exactly what those dates are i think it already happened this year if i'm not mistaken or late last year so i don't think they're being affected by it right now but you know like those kinds of things like where like someone says they, they might be from this area and they might go to crawford cure and squirrel fest but they're like you know squirrel fest is my one event that i, I won't miss and if if they coincide in dates like like i wonder what that's going to do to attendance you know right right no i i, I totally agree it's uh it's it's a uh, it's a wild ride, man. Um, I, I'm I'm definitely bummed out by the whole situation, man. It's it's hard to st uh, stay up. You know that's why taking these little walks with Rig is you know it's doing a doing a big thing for my mental uh, state. You know, I've been stuck at home. We've I'm deemed non-essential right now in in production work, so been having to stay home you yeah, know I, I feel you on that one so luckily you know i my last job was actually considered not essential and so you know i went and made myself essential and found a job that i could do that actually luckily it pays more i got actually making quite a bit more money than i was before and it's essential but i'm working from home so i was already stuck at home and then now i'm home but i gotta work and so it's kind of a weird dynamic of of what to do so i'm trying to find some projects to keep me busy you know like starting a podcast or you know or, or maybe a new build because it, it, it's it's tough man it's tough and it's you know yeah. i get to go out like i'll go to the grocery store and i try not to but i'll go to the grocery store um i'm still kind of going over to my mom's house and you know seeing them once a week because you know i that's that's the tough one for me is not seeing my family i think that that's something i can't yeah. do but um the only one that i have that i've only seen once in this whole uh, corona thing was not much my grandma just because you know she's at a, at a higher risk and i don't want to risk that one so i i saw her once and it was kind of like look like, i love you but like I, this is why i'm not seeing you because i don't want you to get sick because i go out a lot and you know luckily my job now has been more like i'm out in the field and doing things so the craziness has kind of subsided but no i'd like definitely with like if, if you don't have a build if you don't have something like it, you just go nuts man yeah. Well, luckily I keep breaking things while I'm out. So <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> at least I, it, it keeps me busy. Yeah. The whole thing's been tough. I haven't seen any of my family there in this whole thing. I mean, we're, we're being pretty good about, you know, staying home and, and, and staying away. Um, yeah, I was texting with my sister the other night and it's like, as soon as this is all, you know, lightened up a little bit we, we got to get together it's oh for sure time since we've seen everybody for sure yeah no that's that's how i am so i have you know my 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 group of friends here that are you know like my, my little family and we we're used to seeing each other like i think so there's there's my my friend that i've been friends with since high school we were like 14 when we met and he's like a brother to me and i 
I haven't seen him since this all started, and we're not the type that actually see each other all the time, but we'll see each other, and we'll have barbecues, and then there's, like, my other friend who, like, I play soccer with once a week, and I haven't seen him in a couple months, and so it's, it's crazy. We're all sitting here, like, we have a group chat, and we're, like, like, come on, like, as soon as this is over, like, we're taking a family road trip, we're we're having a big-ass barbecue, like, you know, we're, we're doing something, because cause we got to make up for time lost. Yeah, that's for sure. It's, uh... We've got a group chat at at work that 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 we've been chatting back and forth and just over this whole thing, a lot of memes and and goofy, uh, goofy stuff going through it. But I mean, that's kind of how we are at work. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I've met some of your coworkers. Your coworkers are pretty funny. They're they're a good group of guys. Yeah, they're uh, <laughs> they're, they they could be a little wild, but. Uh, there is a there's there's a, a decent group of our seers that are starting to show up at work. Yeah, a couple of them were at uh, what was that Crawford Career that I think they. I think so. Through. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, they uh they would do a pizza and RC on Fridays. They'd bring a, you know their slashes and their yetis and all that, and they're big time into sending donuts and whatnot. But yeah, it's fun to watch uh, people walking in with RC cars when I thought you know I was the only. RC dude there but uh I'm rubbing off on him that's funny you know um it's actually kind of funny so my father-in-law has actually been contacting me lately because um you know through his job it's it's a more industrial job so it's it's so funny he um he started calling me he's like hey like what do you what do you think about this drift car and him he him and I got into RC together like he's actually you know big reason why I'm in RC uh because he had a lighting business for off-road jeeps for the one-to-one world and we actually ended up becoming an RC dealer through Red Cat. Uh, that was actually our first, like, RC ever. And that was maybe, like, eight or nine years ago. And it was, like, our first RC was an Everest 10. And so we got into this together because of crawlers, right? And that's all he's ever done. He's got crawlers. He actually, I built him a drag car. He ran it a total of three times. And he still thinks it's the fastest around. But it's it's laying there. And, you know, so we, we do this together a lot. And I've had drift cars almost as long as I've had crawlers. And, but he's never really had an interest in them. He thinks they look cool. Like, you know, the Porsche I built was pretty cool. But never had an interest. In, and I just get a text and he's like, hey, like, what, what's up with this uh, <laughs> with this drift car? And I'm like, well, it's it's cool. Like, you know, it, it, it's got a good price on it. And, you know, yeah, if it's your first one, that's cool. Like, who are you getting it for? And he's like, no, it's for me. I was like, what? Right. He's like, yeah, apparently a bunch of the because he work, he has he's a supervisor. So he's got a bunch of younger guys. And I say younger. They're probably about my age. Um He's got a bunch of younger guys that all have RCs, and they've apparently um, in their weld shop have a have a track going. And so he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna oh, nice. <laughs> I'm gonna get a <laughs> I'm gonna get an, a drift car so I can I can drift with them at this." And I was like, "Oh, like that's cool," because he started asking me about, about mine. He's like, "Yeah, like do you mind if I borrow one?" I was like, "Dude, take it. Like that's actually kind of cool. Like to see you get into this. So like this this whole because they're they're having a lot more like downtime. So he's he's able to kind of just you know hang out in his lunch or whatever it may be and and, and drift and it's i'm like that's that's like that's so funny that's cool yeah that's super cool yeah i miss my drift card i think i texted you the other day talking about man i kind of want to get a drift car again it's funny you just i could sit in my garage and just you know look out the door and drift that thing around Dude, on the court i love my drift cars out of it you know how much i love my drift. my drift cars go everywhere with me it doesn't matter if it it's a if it's a you. crawler event yes. or it will one drift car my uh my turtle my that one goes everywhere with me that 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 the little gray gray car that one's a that one's a must it's 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 been featured in a bunch of instagrams for for the dumb crap that i do <laughs> everywhere i go <laughs> yeah that uh that thing's pretty fun it's pretty fun i don't think i'm yet to drive uh drive that yet though really i don't i don't think, I don't Not, think I have. you didn't get it at rc4 I, so many people drove it at rc4 wheel drive so, dude that thing was flying Every, they, <laughs> so so for, so for our listeners because you know we it's an rc hangout and we kind of forget that we're recording and we're, we're talking to you guys but i have a it's an hpi rs4 i ended up buying this i want so i bought it for the grand opening of jj customs and shout out to jason we'll have him on the show here pretty soon not today but we'll have him on the show but for his original grand opening you know we set up a, a drift course and i have a two-wheel drive drift car and it's a it's a purple fox body it's it's a really like showy body and you know whenever people see it they're like especially little kids mostly little kids they say can i drive it 
and I'm like, oh, like uh. it's a toy. But like this one, I, like I have, I have my like, I have no problem handing over the controller to any of my cars except for mine that are more cop built. You know what I mean? Like there's right. there's there's ones that I'm just like, you know, if you break something on this, it's it's custom like custom made or it's you know custom anodized and you know. And I don't like being that guy that says no, you know, even though people understand, like, yeah, it's an expensive toy. Like, parents will understand. I don't like being the guy that says no. So I actually ended up picking up, um, and it was like 240 bucks or something like that, just a stock RS4. And I was like, no, but you can drive this one. And that's exactly what that car was built for was just, like, I didn't upgrade anything. I just said, here, drive it, right? And then me being me, I was like, nah, this isn't fast enough for me. So I, I took the motor out of my drag car, which is like a like a 5,500 kV motor, and just slapped it in yeah, there. Perfect. Yeah, I slapped it in there with a castle sidewinder, and and it, it it spins the tires off like crazy. Yeah. And, and so yeah, and I does. still I still hand that car. I'm like, dude, try it. Like here you go. It's ridiculously overpowered. Like it it could have 40 percent of the power it has, and it probably would still drift the same like i don't i don't think there's any performance to it other than it's just it just looks ridiculous and it sounds ridiculous and yeah, yeah rc4 will drive everybody was like that's so cool and my first instinct was here here you go try it and <laughs> yeah, try it. <laughs> there was actually that that so where we were camped it was kind of like a little like circle like cul-de-sac looking thing for camp yeah, campground like a cul-de-sac. yeah and like me being i don't know what gets into my head i'm like you know I think I could drift this whole thing. And so I sat there for maybe 20 minutes just trying to hit this hole. And it was probably like a good 30 yards of, of, of circle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and this is actually, so it was on Oscar's IG. And Uncle Schultz ended up actually having it on his on his, uh, on his Instagram. So I'm going to have to go look for it and, and tag oh, the RC yeah. Hangout on it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, if that you... Was, that was a blast, man. That, that, that car was, it was... It was running that day. For it sure. Yeah, so if you guys notice that, if, if you're listening and you saw Uncle Uncle Schultz um, from Uncle Schultz. from Associated, and that, that, that word is a trademark now, Uncle, Uncle Schultz. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you, if you saw that on there, so that was uh, the Black Turtle Mustang. Uh, it currently has a Ford Focus RS body on it, but if you see me out there and you see that car, don't be shy and just ask for it. I'll, I'll probably let you drive it unless it's broken. Even then, it might look cool, and I'll still let you drive it. <laughs> running on three wheels. It doesn't even matter. Hey, I've, I've done you that know, you before. Have, you always have to have a, a way overpowered car. At, yeah. at least one that's just ridiculous. You know? Yeah, I actually did that with uh, uh, Sean Williams Speed Bump. I don't know if you've ever had the, the pleasure of meeting him. He's a really cool guy. But he was like, yeah, bro, like he had a, a drift car. And I was like, did someone say drift car? <laughs> and so I, I pulled it out of the shop. It was like 10 o'clock. And he was like, bro, like that thing is ridiculous. And I'm like... Here, like same thing, and it ended up breaking right on him, man. cause he went full throttle, cause his had like a, I think it might have, might have had like a like two thousand kV or something motor in it, so it wasn't necessarily like as fast as mine or as had the the wheel spin that mine had, so he drove it like it was his, yeah. and just like the first try, just spun the wheels out and cracked one of the wheels, and you just see the wheel, <laughs> the wheel drive like just thirty meters out and just like oh that's gone, and I'm like dude yeah, keep great. going, it's still spinning just keep the throttle on and he was like no yeah. i broke it and i'm like dude it doesn't matter just do it <laughs> it's already broke what are you gonna do yeah you know just might as well it. just see how far we can take it they do say drive it drive it till the wheels fall off right and and we live that to the fullest here at black turtle garage <laughs> absolutely I, I did that on my one nine race uh yesterday took it out I, I swapped over some axles. Oh, man. I, <laughs> they were the axles that I used at Axial Fest two years ago, and I, had, I didn't do anything to them. I pulled them off of a SCX-10 and put them on the 1.9 Wraith. I'm like, ah, it'll be fine. And I took it out, got about a half mile, and <laughs> the whole front wheel and, and, and shaft comes out, and I'm like, oh, I'm on three. So I carried it back half mile, grabbed another car, and went back out. <laughs> It yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'd like to have one of those cars for at least each of the classes. Um, I think for crawling, it would probably have to be my my bomber, and it's not overpowered at all. I think it's got like a twenty turn, like uh, stock axial motor on it, but it, it'll spin the wheels. You know, my my bomber, and it, it's the, it's the same thing. It's that car that, you know, I, I see that kid on the trail that 
you know, maybe like at Diablo where it's not just RC people, like there's people hiking and a little kid just sitting there, you know, drool down to his ankles. And I'm like, here, <laughs> yeah. little dude, like, take that one. And, it out, man. <laughs> and it, it's the car Try that it I out, know man. that you can fuck, like a little kid will sit there, like death grip on the, on the throttle and it'll probably make it out okay. So it, I don't have All a problem right. with handing out. It's that one. It's the Mustang, which is the, the Focus now. Uh, and probably the monster truck. The monster truck I've handed out a lot too. Yeah, your monster truck's been pretty solid. Mine has uh, mine has been not so much. Um, the one that I can definitely hand off is my TRX four. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am not nice to that rig <laughs> at all, at all. It comes to the uh, it comes to the lighthouse when Trish and I go out to the uh, Point Arena, so you know all the links, all the screws, it's all rusted up, and you know I can go out and bash it, but then I can also go out and crawl it. Yeah, I mean I I love that little truck. That that thing has been so good to me. I hadn't broke a thing on it. You know I have, I have That's yet good. to to build an RX uh, TRX four. I. I I haven't gone back to Traxxas ever since I sold my Slash. I don't have a Traxxas product. I I like driving yours. I've driven yours a couple times, and yeah. I just, I've never, just the portals don't do it for me. I'm just not a fan yeah. of portals. I don't even, it, I mean, it is what it is. If they were straight axles or portal axles, I, I don't think it'd matter. That that little rig is, is, is bulletproof. Oh, and, for sure, for sure. I, I just. I've heard other people not have the same. Uh, experience as me but man I, i've had really good luck with that truck yeah and i don't i don't even think it's you know like a performance thing like i'm not sitting here going oh well straight axles better than portals you know nothing like that but it's just i don't know coming from the I'm real sorry. world like i mean obviously there's portals in the real world but i don't think i've ever met someone that actually ran portals like oh, actually i lied i had i knew of somebody that had a, a unimog that had portals for obvious reasons but no i just right like i think and, and this was my old way of thinking because that, that's kind of flown out the window. But I've never really liked having more than one or two of, of a single type of car. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I have – like I think Crawlers is the one that I have the most of. And that's because I, you know, I have mine. I have Kendra's. Um, and then I have you know, an extra one so that I can loan it out or if I have a family member or a friend coming over. But I've never really been the type that's like, oh, like I got to have this. I got to have a Portals. I gotta. So it's just – like to me it was just another Crawler. And there wasn't anything right. necessarily that was like, I have to have this. Like, with the element, like, I just had to have it. You know what I mean? That was something that was, you know, there was uh, some some things that were new, but I never went out and bought it. The only reason I have an element now is because I actually ended up winning one at, at Crawford Cure. You know? Yeah, that was amazing, man. That That's a nice little rig. I wish I could have taken advantage of the, the deal that's out right now. Uh, oh. Was it two of them for... What is it? Four ninety nine or something. Yeah, like they're that. like two. It's like ends up being like two fifty a piece. And if you want to go in on that, let me know, man. I'm I'm down. Yeah. We'll split it. You know, if I, if I have, if I was working in the past, you know, six weeks, and uh, we could probably do that. But uh, you know, yeah, I think we're gonna have to talk COVID. about that one because <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not a bad idea. No, I actually. So it's kind of funny. I ended up getting one um, through Jason, um, a trail walker, and. It was going to be our Proline build. And it, even that, I was like, like, do we really need another crawler? And, well, here's the kicker. And here's here's what, like, I kind of tricked myself into it. I said, you know, I think this one's going to be for Kendra. Because <laughs> I told Kendra, I was like, I was like, hey, Kendra, like, yeah, let's, sure. like, what, what are you building for? Because, so, for those that don't know, Proline by the Fire actually has a, a, they have their show and shine, right? And they have multiple classes. Um, last year was our first year attending. And Kendra's about the aesthetics. I, I don't I, I mean Kendra will drive hers and then drive mine and say well why doesn't yours why doesn't mine drive like yours and I'm like well because you haven't done anything to it other than paint the body <laughs> and she's like well I don't like that fix that and so you know I ended up you know fixing hers up and I'm like no you got to do it yourself and she's like no that's that's what I have a that's what I have a you for and she's like I just I just want to drive it it's pretty I'll drive it I'll go to events with you but I'm not really trying to wrench on it I you know I've I've done enough of that on the big jeep and I'm like okay fair enough mm. yep. <laughs> and so last year yep. for the show and shine she was it was 80s theme and she's like you know i'm I, I gotta have something I, I gotta i gotta win i gotta i'm like whoa like there was this fire in her she's very competitive she's a long <laughs> lifelong athlete but i've never seen her have that kind of interest in in rc like she's never been like i gotta go win this race i gotta go do this but she's like a show and shine 
I gotta win it. <laughs> so, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make it look good. So I was like, okay, like like what's so what, so what's the deal? And she's had this idea for like forever. I, I bought a Bronco body, I think in twenty twelve, for for her crawler, and it, it, we were gonna turn it into a, a mystery machine. Well, that body sat for six years <laughs> without being touched, <laughs> and she she was like, you know, like this this is it. Like we're doing the mystery machine. So I go through this paint job, take my time. It comes out looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. And oh, absolutely, that thing was nice. Yeah, and and I bought this thing when I first started in RC, and I didn't. I don't know why. Like, I come from the full size world, so I know what wheelbase is, but I didn't realize that it was a whole inch longer than her SCX10. It was like a 13 inch wheelbase or something like that. Oh. And it was it was the week of the event, like the week prior, on a Sunday night. I finished. I went to go put it on. I, did, I don't know why I didn't measure it beforehand. <laughs> and it was too long, and I'm like, oh, my God. So I call up Jason. Jason's going to come up a lot because he's he saved me a lot of my projects when I'm just like, bro, I need to go over right now. It's like 8 o'clock. I know you're closing, but I need this. <laughs> so I called him. I'm like, hey, man. I'm like, hey, what, what bodies do you have in stock, like, right now? And he started naming this list, and it was, like, the Toyota SR5. And in... If you've met Kendra, you know she's a Jeep girl. And if there's one word that's poison to Jeep girls is Toyota. So the right. I said tuh and she was like, Nope. Nope. So the only body that was left was a Pro Line uh Pro Line Cherokee. And so we went with that. I was like, Let's do it. Let's she's not she loves Jeeps. It's a Jeep. Let's get it. So yep. I painted this thing in like three days. I had no wheels for it, no wheels and tires. It had stock, like, wheels painted orange, and they were ugly as, as all heck. But luckily, we got Adam. Adam's our ASD brother, too, and he's uh, he's got Noodle Custom Wheels, and I, I I was pulling strings left and right. I was like, hey, man, I need some wheels. Can I, can I, what do you got? Boom. He's like, I'll bring them to the event. I love it. <laughs> so I was like, I need rings. He's like, I got this and that, but it's going to cost you extra. And I'm like, dude, at this point, I'll, I'll give you my left foot, like whatever it takes. Right. And so we end up because we got there on like on Wednesday or Thursday because we were helping set up for the event. And so I'm sitting there like in our spare time in the middle of the desert, just painting wheels, finishing up the body, gluing things in. Little knickknacks and stuff. <laughs> um, the vendor booths opened like the Friday before, and so like I got some scale by Chris accessories. Um, we that was actually the, when I met Pushrod. Um, so those were cool guys too. And I met them, and they hooked me up with a bunch of stuff. And they're like, "Here, I have this is blue and this is orange, and it kind of fit, kind of fit the the scheme." And we went and got a a Scooby so that he could be the driver. And she actually ended All up right. taking first place in the women's class. Um. And so she this year she's like, well I gotta, I gotta, I gotta win back my title. Like I gotta, I gotta go and defend. And I'm like, I don't know what like, uh-huh. what it is Proline brought out of her. But thank you Proline, uh, you got you yeah. you earned a lifelong customer because of that. Because now she's like, I gotta go back and I gotta win this. And and I'm like, well, well crap. Like so I went up to her and I was like, okay, so we're gonna put a new body on your, on your mystery machine. And she's like, you're not touching my mystery machine. <laughs> so I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, so what do, you, do you think you're just going to go back with the same thing for a different theme and think you're going to win again? And she's like, well, no, but and I'm like, so. And so the compromise was that I bought her a trail walker and we're going to cost effectively, you know, wink, wink, try to modify that one uh-huh. and, and try to take her nice. her crown back. Yeah, very good. No, no leaks on what the theme's going to be this year. Uh, yeah, so it's carnival theme. So, um. I think I think we'll we'll leave it at that. I think we'll, we'll we might reveal some stuff here on Instagram here and there of what we do. Um, I will say, this year I got her to go in on a trailer. Oh yeah, there you go. So it'll be themed, and the good thing is that it'll be a trailer that can be easily easily modified back so that uh, Papa Bear can use it for his own toys. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna need that to uh, to. Uh, so the drag car into the uh, events now. No, actually, it's a it's a the UTV trailer. So it, it'll it'll pull oh. my little uh, a Can Am. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. That'll be slick. Yeah, but it's it's carnival. It's for the carnival, man. It's it's for the cause. Oh yeah, yeah, carnival. 
carnival. <laughs> yeah. Well, right on. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, cool. I, I really enjoyed that that Scooby rig. That thing was that was that, that sucker was pretty nice. Yeah, it, it still gets some compliments. It, it's pretty cool. Those noodles wheels set it off. Uh, and all the scale accessories, like you know, like I said, thank you to Push Rod and thank you to Scale by Chris because they they saw and they were instantly like, bro, I have this. Like they they they'll go in their stock and they're like, this is what I got, this is what I have, and and that's why I love this community. It's they're always there to help, you know. And obviously, we want to kind of help them out by by purchasing local and purchasing through those uh, small mom and pop guys that you know they're they're out there trying to you know pay for their vacations with <laughs> with the RCs. Because let's be real. Those small businesses aren't out here to make a million dollars or it's mom and pop guys are, you know, doing it with their kids and they, they want to pay for help pay for their rig or help pay for this. And that's that's the reality of what some of these guys do. So, you know, we want to support them as much as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're definitely not going to get rich on on anything, RC. It's uh, it's all because we like to do it. Exactly. Know? Yeah, that's something that it's uh, all because we like to do. it. It's actually funny. I've heard it more than once. I heard it from. Uh, I heard it from Jason at one at one point, and I heard it from Ray from Sticky Kicks, who's uh, also been a really good guy. Um, they said, you know, they they said, you know, I'll let you in on a little secret. The best way to make a million dollars in RC is to spend two million. And I was like, okay, like noted, like I get it, like you're right, like you're not, you're, you, if you're, if you're in this, you're not in this for for the money. You're in this for the love of it. Yeah, it's definitely fun. It's a it's it's a it's a crazy little hobby. I mean, yeah. there's always something to do with it. I mean, that's that's kind of why I got away from the the uh, track cars. Uh, I mean, there was only so much you can really do with them. Once I started playing with the crawlers, I was like, "Holy moly!" There's so much stuff we can do with this thing. Little 3D printed items, wheels, and mirrors, and figures, and I mean, there's just so much you can do with them. Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny. I'm actually getting myself into the track life now because you know. I, I I never. That's where a lot of people started is with the you know old old RC tens and you know small jumps or whatever. And then it obviously became this big, you know, track, you know, over the last couple of decades. And everybody started there. But I, I've never, like, I've owned RC tens. Uh, the you know the the B five. I have a B five now, and I have I had a B six point one that was actually stolen before I could ever drive it. But no, I I wanna right. I wanna get into the track life. I wanna I wanna try it out because I'm I'm a competitive guy and. I don't think that's something that that you can really do in crawling. Like you can be competitive, but like it's not really the setting for it, you know? Like when I'm crawling, I'm just right. I'm just having a good time. It's it's chill, it's it's you know, it's Hakuna Matata, it's you know, no worries. But but every All once right. in a while I like to yeah, be competitive. I just like to go out and hang out. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's like ninety percent of my RC life is just going out vibing, but you know, I'm I'm a competitor. I like to be able to turn that on and so I think having a local track definitely helps with that, and I think that's something that I'm gonna eventually, once this is all over, get into. Yeah, I I still have all mine. I never got rid of them because I wouldn't want to invest in all of it again. I know, I know you know, I've you... got all the technos. I've got the truggy, the eight scale buggy, the short course. I never did get the ten scale that they came out though. So. Yeah, I know you you don't like getting rid of things, man. I'm still waiting for you no, to gift me no. that that. Is the uh, fit scale? Oh, it's uh, it's down there. <laughs> I know it's Brock and I are. <laughs> That's right. Brock and I are, are gonna down. get into a battle over this. You know, trying to who's gonna get your fit scales? Bro, that sucker's a little loud though to take for a walk. Hey, that's it. bro. I'm I'm a car guy. All my cars are loud. What do you mean? Yeah, you that's eat? true. But like, I don't my, think my neighborhood would like it too much. Oh, my neighbors hate me anyway, so I, I you know, give them another reason. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you know, one, of these days, one of these days we'll bring it out. We'll, we'll bring it out. Maybe I'll fire it up tomorrow and make sure she's still still a runner. There we go. That that should be your next live video. Take that baby on a walk and see see what heads turn there. <laughs> Everybody looking at it saying, can you ride that thing? Oh, for sure. For sure. Can can my yeah. baby ride on it? <laughs> yeah, it's big and it just I takes still some... have the I still have the fifth scale buggy down there that I need to finish up. Ooh. I, I got it. it. It's you know, it is a, a, a two stroke gas one, but I was converting it all to electric. So there you go. You're just, you're bringing us to what kind of what I want. What I want to talk about next is like what's what's so what's on your bench, man? What are you what are you building? What's 
what's new? What what are you doing? Because I I know you said that you know Rona Mama Rona's got you a little sideline on the on yeah. the on the internet clicking finger. The Rona's definitely got me. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely got me uh, not spending any money. My biggest thing was all the the vehicles that were in the garage that weren't running for one reason or another are they're all put back together. They're all put back together, and actually, I can grab a radio and and drive them. Yeah, and so that was that was actually a big accomplishment. You know, the the uh, the monster truck was still still broke from uh, ASD last year, and during all of this, I I finally got it all. So, put back so I'm sorry, together. I'm gonna have to cut you off. So how did, how exactly did that truck break? Uh, um, our boss broke it. Yeah, but, yeah, but doing what? <laughs> Uh, I think the world wants to racing know. it. Yeah, but but what uh, were you I, racing? I Who were you racing? Who ended up uh, winning that race? The, it was it was the black turtle. Tr- uh, <laughs> truck. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what convinced Sharif to get me on the team. It was it was ours. You know, it was what was it one two? We went out four, right? And you took. No, you went first. I, I thought I wasn't that the final. I don't know. I wasn't driving because I was doing no, I, same reason we you weren't driving. Out, we, before the final, I, I think you're right. That's when the that's when the wheel came off. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. But see, I, I, I'm telling you, I think that's what what made Sharif wanna bring me onto the team. Is he's like, you know, he's not afraid to beat the boss, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did. I I couldn't drive because I was helping run the event. So uh, Sharif from Reese RC drove mine, and uh. Yeah, I'm the same it, thing here. It was, Luckily, it wasn't really race ready at that time, but uh, Brock and I uh, kind of did a uh, indie pit crew deal on it. And hey, man, you can't tell me nothing about race ready. My 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 truck was running on two point two Hyraxes at that point. That's how unready mine was because my I ended up remember I ended up stripping my hexes and we yeah. were sitting there trying to figure it out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I don't think you even had the right the right tires. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, but it, Whatever, that, that was that was a good time. That was definitely like that big. So I think ASD was actually what what sold me on reefs, and I think I've told you this before, just because, you know, at that point I was under a different company. You know, I was running for yeah. a different company, and there was always, especially with Byron. <laughs> I think to this day, like we're on the same team now, but like Byron and I still have this like, you know, man, like my triple four is better than your triple four, even though it's the exact same thing, <laughs> just because it's Byron. <laughs> Um, I think that just yeah. the, the relationship that we we developed, and you know, Byron, if you're listening, man, I love you, and and you know, it's all fun and games. But yeah, that whole weekend was just you know, like oh man, see you're doing this because you you ride reefs or you ride this other company, and and it was all in good fun, you know, it was all in good fun, and it was never never from a place of like oh like you're you know, it was like yo, you have a good product, we have a good product, we're competitors, and no, and that's what it is. Yeah. And b- <laughs> no matter what, like you guys, like I was in the reefs tent. You know, I had, I had logos for my, my, my company uh, all over me. And, and, you know, there was never a, like, get away from me. It was always like a, you know. No, like, it was never an issue. The the Reefs family is 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 amazing, man. I love those people. And, and just, I told. It's just amazing. That's, that was the big thing is, you know, that I, I don't want to be on any team that's that's not a family, you know. If it's. If we can't all just hang out and have a, a great time with each other, and you know they'll bend over backwards for you at any of the events. You need something, you ask them that they're gonna take care of it for you, man. Yeah, they're, and it's funny. Awesome group. I I told uh, Reef himself this, but uh, he didn't add it to my contract. I told him I said, you know, I'm I'm only here as long as uh, you know, I had I had one factor that was definitely my selling point, and that was uh, Mama Larouche. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's she's number one, that's for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Mama Larouche. Again, if you're listening, we love you. We yeah, we love you. I'm the sweetest person I've ever met in my life, and literally our trail mom. And I know that she she always she always takes care of us, and she always she, she she's just the trail mom. That's that's what it is. Yep, yep. It's a great group down there. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Oh yeah, and they it was funny. I went down to uh, to Reef's warehouse. And I was texting. Yeah, you, I was so, out. you were able to get down there. Shoot, I, I almost didn't. I almost didn't. I was down there, and and the coordinates that were on the website took me about five miles away from where the where the warehouse actually is. And I was texting. Oh, wow. At this point, I was I was still pretty new to the team, so I didn't have anybody's phone number. And I, 
So I I, I message Reef the Reef's page. I messaged Reef himself. I messaged Brock. And, you know, they were busy running an event, so I, I wasn't expecting, like, quick replies. But then I was like, you know what? I have an ace in the pocket. Like, let's, let's, let's do, let's, let's hit up Mama LaRouche. And sure enough, she, she, she texted Brock. <laughs> Brock texted me and was like, bro, I'm so sorry. And, like, so luckily I was able to make it. But it was such a good time. And she, but she was like, oh, I, man, like, I, I wish, I wish I could be there. Like, she's like, let me see if I can figure it out. And she was like, no, I can't be there. But, oh, my God, I'm so sad. And she was just, like, super, like. Like I felt bad. I was like, damn, like, like I should have planned this when when she was available, so I could be here, knowing that it was like, just a stop by. But I was like, no, like I love her that much. I'm like, like, oh, what can I do to yeah. to see you now? Yeah, again, when this is when this is all over, or lightened up, we got to plan a trip. Down oh, there. oh, they're just they're coming up for my wedding, man. Oh, great, perfect. Yep, perfect. Yep, the the, the Larouche right. family is getting a, a, an invite, and they're they they said they're for sure coming. Well, if That's Mama awesome. Rona allows. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, one of these times we'll have to get Byron on. Oh, that, that'd that be funny. Be that would be I mean, funny. He's, he's right next door. Just, just yell, sure hey, Byron. In one time while we're recording. Oh, for sure. And and I'd love to yeah. have him. I love that guy. Uh, to this day, I think I've known him for a little bit under a year now. And my favorite memory, and I don't think I'll ever. <laughs> I talk about this constantly and this goes it's a funny story it's a safety story and it's just like it, oh, no. you know what i'm talking about so at rc four-wheel drive uh at the west coast scale challenge we were setting up and i think he this was his first time driving the trx6 so he bought a trx6 and <laughs> we were setting up for dinner he goes to put his radio down so that he can go and turn off the car. He sets it on a cooler. And this is behind an RV, right? At a campsite. And he goes <laughs> he goes to reach for his car to turn it off. And I don't know how he didn't see me. But I came up behind him. And just, it was instinct. I saw the radio. I saw him reaching for it. And I was like, damn, I'm a bad person. But I'm going to do it. And I death grip. I go full five-year-old on this on this radio. And the look on this man's face when when that radio runs it was just the most beautiful thing that i'll never get to experience again <laughs> wide-eyed it was like a cartoon like you know in those cartoons when like like the the the, the cool guy sees a sees a like the old mickey mouse cartoons and they see the the, the hot girl or whatever and their eyes just pop out oh, yeah, that that's exactly what it felt like, like. The eyes. <laughs> yeah there you go there you go that <laughs> And it was just like yeah. this, this, uh, it was like those memes, you know, where it says, it was at this moment he knew he fucked up. <laughs> 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 like, it just, in my mind, like, it just froze at that moment, and I have that picture in my head forever. And it he, like, I, I feel like I almost gave him a heart attack, but he loved, he, he looked at me and was like, bro, like, I love you, but oh my God, like, I, I, I think I need to go change my underwear or something. Right. No, I can tell you exactly why he looked that way. <laughs> It was our our first Axio Fest, and that that same thing happened to him. But the car just freaked out. I oh, think gonna, that's right. He was going to change the battery on the bomber, I believe, and it just freaked out. Or he shut his controller off first, I think, and the bomber freaked out, and it it ended up in in the water. I don't remember who grabbed it. The tires are just wailing away. Got a little road rash on whose ever arm it was. Man, I can't remember who grabbed it out of there. That's funny. I'm sure, I'm sure Byron will tell us when we have. Oh, I'm sure. Well, now now for sure we're going to have to have him on here so we can tell us that story. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that was that was good times. Yeah. Good times. Yeah, well no, I mean Rona's got us all out here. You know, and if if I'm I'm a silver linings kind of guy, and if I have to think of like you know kind of one of those like what, what what's good coming out of this is it's like you said there's a bunch of cars that you know maybe needed some love that I was like I don't have time I have an event this weekend or I have this and that well I don't have any of that anymore so like no nope. from where I'm sitting now I can see a Reefs triple four uh, some sway bars a bunch of scale accessories I see axles that need to be built. And I'm like, you know, I think it's that time. I think I think I don't have an event to do. I don't have a rush. Like, let's let's get these things built. And you know, the the, the free things maybe you know axles need to be re-greased or this and that. And you know, I'm expecting everybody listening to come out of this with 
with almost r- brand new refurbished trucks because you you had nothing better to do right now. That's right. I mean, that's what I did. I mean, the first week I was stuck at home. I'm looking around at the house like, well, I'm gonna go paint our bedroom. we went down to home depot before things got real crazy and picked out some paint and i I painted our bedroom then i remembered i don't like painting so that's that's where it stopped on painting (laughs) then went out in the garage and was looking at you know a couple of the rigs that were in pieces and just got to work on them on stuff i had laying around you know, it's not working. You don't have the money coming in. So mm-hmm. you're just looking around in your drawers trying to trying to find parts, put it back together. Yeah. Luckily, I had most of it. I mean, I hit Jason up once or twice for a couple little parts here and there. But everything's together again. Yeah, like I said, I got some stuff that could probably use some love. Um, I got to figure out. I think... Like, I can think of one thing on each one of my cars that should probably be fixed. Like, I think my main crawler, my SCX-10 that's from, like, 2013 could use some new tires. And so that that's something I could hit up Jason for. Um, I have I have a Mustang drift body that I bought, like, two years ago that I keep saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint it. I'm going to do this. And then so I might paint that and put that on the drift car. Um, yeah, there, there's trailers that need to be built. There's... Tires that need to be swapped. There's servos that need to be swapped. There's, you know, I've had a pair of axles for Kendra's, uh, uh, what's mystery machine that, that I haven't built and I've had them for like a year. So I think that might be the big project to earn me some points with her. There you go. I mean, it's good to have that stuff laying around. I think I've, I've got everything. Well, actually I have the, what did I get? RC four wheel drive, the, the forerunner hard body. Mm-hmm. I have that sitting in a box that oh I nice tinker around with i just don't know what uh i don't know what to put it on yet i thought about putting it on the uh vs410 i was just about this i literally had that at the tip of my tongue i said yeah right. oh that'd be sick i think it'd be cool i want to see someone do this i want to see someone i mean obviously probably not with a vs410 but i want to see a, a, an ifs forerunner with a hard body oh Nice. I think yeah. that'd be cool, like take an element or something. Or I mean, they have the the conversion kit for the axial, you know. Just throw that the element IFS on it. I'm trying to think. Somebody put that IFS on something. I saw it on what was it, Facebook or Instagram? God, I wish I could remember what I saw that on. It was something unusual. Hmm. Huh. I don't know. Oh man, I can't think of who it was. I know, I, I know, I want to put it on because I have, company. I have my element that's got a hard body on it. It's got the F three fifty, and I think that one might get an IFS or. Uh, I think what I really want to do so I, that axial F one hundred has been calling my name, but like I told you, I don't know if I was recording when we, when I said it, but I want to build a lowrider car because Tyler's got one, and and I've been thinking about that for years. But I want one like on bags, like I want one that I can hit a switch and that thing just you know lays frame. And then I want it to oh, be yeah. able to lift. So I want it to be have a functional suspension. Um, but I also want to build like a pre-runner style. So I'm I'm torn. I think, I, I, I mean, obviously I could do both. But I don't like having the same car twice. So so we'll right. see. We'll see what ends up happening. I should go with the low low. Oh, for sure. But I think I might be able to like get like a J Concepts like like F350 body or something. Like a square body Ford. I uh. think that... That might be the way to go a little bit. Because uh, have you seen that uh, active suspension that, that's that been going around? I'm not sure. So it's a guy that, that has... You know, actually, I think I saw it maybe about six months ago. I yeah. Think it, like... Yeah, it actually made the news. Like, it was actually, like, I saw it on, like, like the news one time because it was, uh, um, it was like that. It looked like a Ghostbusters car. It was like a wagon. And it was just driving around someone's living room, and it had it kind of like moved like a real suspension, like you could see kind of that like body roll oh, to it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's just like an Arduino board or something of that nature, and you gotta add your own servos and figure out how to add the servos to the mounts. But uh, so Harley got one, Harley Designs, um, and he's yeah. putting it on his Kyosho, and I have a Kyosho, and the Kyoshos aren't that expensive, so I it might even get a new one for it, but. He's got it. It's got, the, I think, a Camaro body on it, like an old school Camaro. But I think that'd be cool because he actually just came out with a firmware or a, a software update that includes a lowrider setting. Oh, 
nice. Yeah, so it used to be, you know, it just kind of, like, it moved like a real suspension, but now, like, you can hit switches and you could just, you know, put it on three wheels and, and ride it like a low low. and I'm like, oh, man. Uh-huh. That, that might be the way to go. And because and, Harley is designing, like, mounts and stuff to it. And I know... I think I think if I if I give uh, Harley the the puppy dog eyes and you know <laughs> I, I might be able to get those files or you know he he usually puts up most of his files on on his website but if he doesn't I I think that's something we're gonna have to puppy dog eye him for and and just do that to our phasers or and have a low low style and then I gotta find a body and so it's it's a good time but Vatera has that F one hundred that I think that might might be the way to go. Yeah, that that'd be pretty slick. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at Harley's uh, stuff on Thingiverse the other day, but I've been having so many problems uh, searching that site lately. I can only get eleven uh, models to load. I can't get anything else to load. Really? You know, we've our yeah. printer's been going almost nonstop for the last two weeks because we've been printing. So Kendra's best friend works in Chicago, and she's a nurse. Okay. And Kendra's dad found a file for they're called ear savers. So they're for like the the masks that people wear, you know, the ones that go yes. over on your ear, and they're just yeah. like little hooks that go like behind your head, and they hook on, and they, you know, because these nurses are wearing these things twenty four seven. Um, so yeah, we heard about it, and with Erica, that's a uh, Kendra's best friend, uh, being a nurse, uh, her dad's been like like let's print these out and let's mail them out. So it's been running nonstop, and you know now we know other people that need them, and we've been sending them out to. You know, to to folks that need them and uh, and use those kind of masks, so the, the printer's been running nonstop for that. Yeah, that's good. I was gonna print some of the uh, face shields, but I couldn't get any of the uh, the plastic material. I couldn't. It's all bought up because I think everybody's doing it. That's a uh, yeah able to do it. Yeah, and that's that's we well, just got a new spool of red that just came in. So I think that's the only one we bought. But we've had we've had material for a while. Like to we we stocked up before this just because we had a bunch of projects in mind, but no, I luckily uh, we're good right now. Mine actually just stopped printing right now. I don't know if you could hear. It. Did you hear it at all in the background? Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, not at, at all. least I know I can keep printing. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it'll be better once. Right. Well, it'll be even better once you have your actual mic set up. So yeah, and you know this yeah, doesn't no sound kidding. too bad. Well, that's good because you know this was. Kind of spur of the moment for our first try, huh? Yeah, no, it, it's kind of funny, guys. So, so Jeff and I have been talking about this podcast. I think probably like a year now. We we kind of mentioned it a while back, and we're like, like, huh, that'd be cool, but right. <laughs> never really jumped on it. And then you know, Mom Rona came around, and I said, you know, I, I I'm still working. I'm not spending money on gas. I'm not spending money on RCs right now. Like what? Like what can we do? And so. Right. I was like, okay. I ordered uh, my roadcaster and said, like, let's let let's do it. So we we both jumped on it, and uh, Jeff Scott is uh his his mic and his mixer coming in. But uh, we were today was supposed to be our like let let's brainstorm and let's see what we're gonna do. And then we kind of came to the conclusion that this is the RC hangout. You know, we're we're just gonna hang out. We want to have a little bit of a format, but nothing scripted, nothing where it's like we're just gonna record and see what happens. You know. Uh, that that's yep. that's kind of the point of it. And we're like, well, why don't we just record this now? So that's what we did. So there, so, so there <laughs> you go. That was it. And so that's what you're getting now. So if it seems like we're not professional, that's because we're not. We're not. We're, we're not. just here to hang out and and do it. Do what we do. And do what we do. That's right. All right. We do what we do, and we're doing it, and we're gonna do it. Yeah, for and, sure. And you know what? We've about taken about an hour of your time, and I, you know, if you're still here, then we must be doing something right. So, yeah, so I like us. it. <laughs> and thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for thank you for sticking around, and you know, we'll have a little bit more fun stuff to talk about down the road. But you know, this is our first episode. We want we want you guys to get to know us, and and you know, right. So, and we we've, we've I think we've done that. You think you guys can kind of get an idea of what we do? So, Jeff. How many cars do you have in your yes. RC collection? Let's give them something else to know about. Let's see. Let's see how big of an oh, RC junkie God. you are. Uh, give me a second. One, two, three. 
Oh, he's he's doing the. I just, uh, he's got his abacus out. He's counting. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I I'm prepared for this. <laughs> you want to take a guess? Oh, I mean, I heard 18, so I'm gonna go with like 23. 39. 39. Holy moly. Yeah, that's bad. I mean, you know, anytime I think about how many RCs I have, I think about <laughs> I think about Big Country. I think about Big Country. I'm like, you know, he's got to have at least 200 cars, and I'm like, you know, things could be worse. But like, yeah. you know, then I'm like, well, no, like I want 200 cars. So, <laughs> so that, that's always my that that's my cop out card. Anytime Kendra's like, why are you getting another? Well, I'm like, well, Big Country has like, BC has 200. Like, I can have 12. I can have 14. I can have, you know, I think I'm up to 20 now. But, you know, and that that keeps being my excuse. Like, well, BC has 200. I only have 20. Like, it's not yeah. that bad. Well, you know, I don't like to get rid of mine either. It's, it Same. takes a lot for me to get rid of one. Same. I, I get attached. Yeah. I get attached to things and not. You know, I, I'm not a very like possessive guy. Like I don't like having like fancy things, and I'm not the guy that's like you know I don't got my big chain on or anything. But like I get attached to things. Like they have like sentimental value to me. Like like my first art. I still have my my first SEX10. It's actually my main car because <coughs> Kendra actually ended up buying it for me for my birthday. So I'm right. like, that's why a lot of these are still here is because, oh, Trish picked it up for me. Yeah. You know, she surprised me nowhere and said, hey, I, I got it for you. It's like, I can't get rid of that. Yeah. And I'm... I, got, I even have the very first RC professional or hobby grade RC. I was sixth grade, I believe it was. I got it. It was a Kyocho Cosmo. That was my very first one. And it had stone wheels? About four years. Huh? Yeah. Well, sort of. <laughs> it had stone wheels and it was ago, hand, I, it, it was a, a crank back, you know? Yeah. We're not, we don't need to tell them how old I am. Come on. <laughs> so yeah, about four years ago, I went on eBay and, dude, I, I found it. Oh, Somebody nice. had it painted exactly, exactly how mine was. I, 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 had, I had to have it. I have it sitting there on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And my second one was a Blackfoot, so I got uh, I got the re-release of the Blackfoot. Boy, when I got that, I was grinning ear to ear building that thing out here. Oh man, it was so fun. There you go. Yeah, see, I'm. Then, I got the same thing. Like I got like, like my element. I'm never gonna get rid of because it was a. I got it from Coffee Cure, one of my favorite events, and once that's like real near and dear to my heart. And it came from JJ Customs. Like they put, they put it into the raffle, and I ended up winning it. So it, I, I think that's a sign. So I'm that one's staying with me forever. Yeah, that one you can't get rid of that one. Mm -mm. But then we can find an excuse to not get rid of any of them. So oh, well, yeah, and that's, and I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna keep doing it till, till I got no more room, and Kendra makes me get rid of them. <laughs> Yeah, she won't do that. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm bank. That's what I'm banking on. <laughs> so we got a doctor in the house now. So yeah, yeah. And what he's talking about, guys. So like we said, uh, Kendra actually was supposed to graduate this week. Yesterday, the twenty third, twenty third, um, she graduated from her doctorate program from University of Saint Augustine. So she is officially a doctor of occupational therapy. So she's not a medical doctor. She's not like Grey's Anatomy, but you know, she she worked her butt off. And she's uh, joining the medical field, and she's she's gonna kill it. So we got a doctor in the house, and I told her, I told yeah. her, you know, it's funny, and I kind of did it half jokingly, but I think it's gonna pay off in the end, in in one <laughs> in one way or another. So I I told her, I said, you know, I'll follow you to the end of the world, but you know, you're you're like she she moved to SoCal, I stayed up here in Northern California, and she moved down there. I said, you know, this is gonna be hard. Uh, you know, you're my best friend. I love you with all my heart and you know we're gonna get married one day this was before we were engaged um but we'd been together for about five years at the time and i said you know i know this is this is a forever thing so the only thing i ask for in return is when you make that doctor money papa wants a, a ford raptor and you know i said it jokingly oh, and, and it was a ha 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 type of thing and then you know we're looking at salaries and you know, she, she's like, she's like, this ended up being harder than we thought. And she's like, you know, who knows? You might actually get that Raptor. And I'm like, well, nah. and then right now the, 
the new uh, Ford Broncos mm-hmm. coming out, and I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't need you to buy it for me. Right. But I just like I'd be okay with you just not being mad if I show up with a 2020 Bronco in the driveway one day, and so I think I think it's gonna work out. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. So if I pull up to the next event with a, a brand new Bronco when it comes out, then then you know then you know I've made it. I, I'm I, I'll yeah. call that a successful life. I mean I guess there's the whole having yeah. kids and getting married thing, but like you know every man wants a nice Bronco. <laughs> well, maybe not every man, but hey, you. Yeah. I mean, those with good taste. <laughs> hey, hey, that new Bronco, that new Bronco. You know, I. <laughs> the, the, the they came out with two different versions, and the the the, the small version kind of has a Bronco two feel for me, so I'm not getting that one. But the big one, I like it. If if it has a removable top, then there's no doubt in my mind I'm buying one. I don't care how much it is, like I'm doing it. That's cool. Right on. That'd be good stuff. For sure. Oh, hold on. Yeah, guys, I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and fix it up right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and fix it. Let's see what happens. All right, I think we're we're going to lose Jeffy here for a second, but that's okay. We can... Uh, Oh, there he is. How about now? You good? Well, yeah. I, oh, yeah. There we go. I heard you. Yeah. No, so what What actually happened, so I have two routers in my house. I have two separate internet services in my house because of this situation. Oh, okay. And I'm working from home, so my, I'm using my laptop to kind of get your audio. And I was using it in the living room earlier, and that's a whole different setup. It's still a pretty fast internet, but I think my house is made out of full, like, Full on lead because it doesn't reach back here to where my man cave is. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I actually ended up purchasing a whole another internet service specifically for the man cave, and it's it's called the man cave and everything. Yes. The other one's still high, it's like Netgear Twelve or whatever it is, and this one's uh, specifically the man cave. Like it's hooked up to the PlayStation, it's hooked up to like all the electronics back here, right. and it's dedicated for this. And so I was actually That's connected like- to the other one. That's why we were breaking up. Yeah, I I thought maybe it was me because you know I have kids, so yeah. and they're streaming all their video games and whatnot right now, and Trish is inside watching TV, which is streaming as well. So well, there we go. Well, well, we got it. We got to figure yeah. it out. We'll get it. Yeah, just got our little growing pains, but I don't think it was too bad for our first one. Not at all. And you know what? I still got some good stuff to talk about. You tell me, man. I I, I have no time limit. I don't know how long we want this thing to go. We'll go for ten hours if, if that's what it takes. Well, we don't want to kill him on the, on the first one, do we? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do I don't know, crowd. You guys tell me how are you guys feeling right now. Mm. Yeah, I think they want more. Well, well let's <laughs> go with it then, baby. Go with it. There we go. So. Let's talk brands. Let's talk about like what, what, what piques your interest. I know you like your TRX four, and I'm not saying you know what's your end all be all brand, but but give me give me a little insight. If you could only have one crawler for the rest of your life, one brand, uh, and I'm not I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna say one one model. What brand would it be? It's gotta be a brand. That's not fair. It's not. How about a bunch? How about a bunch of pieces put together, custom built? Well, let's 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 see, like base base model. Like you can add to whatever you want, but you can only have, you can like that's the only base that's that's available. Yeah, I can only go with the experience that I have, and the best built truck I have has got to be the VS410. I mean, out of the box. Really. It had it had all the best of the best parts. It just needs a different body, in my opinion. Oh well, yeah, that's a little top heavy. Well, I just I'm not a fan of Scouts. As far as nah. like for me, for me, I think they're right. cool cars, but they're not for me. I mean, I, I I haven't got to drive an Element yet, so Uncle Schultz has never let me drive his. <laughs> so. Hey, those Elements are fun, man. I, I think. Yeah. That's tough for me. That's tough for me. I've never driven a VS410, 
and I think that I I made that my 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 mission for this year. I want to have one by the end of the year, just to just to have. Which model are you you looking at getting? If there's what three out now? Uh the Pro, there's probably the Pro. The Pro. Yeah, the the yeah. Origin's cool, but I I like the VFD, and I'm pretty sure that comes standard on the Pro. I I'm digging that one too because the 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 tranny's sitting down so much lower. Yeah. I just I'd like to build that forerunner body on top of one of those. I think it would be a lot better than having to cut out all the interior to fit the uh That's what I'm saying. Well above it. I think you do have to do a little bit of chopping because I cause I think that's what um what Harley ran at Crawlmasters. His forerunner, it was a hard body and I think he was running it on I I mean obviously I'm pretty like ninety nine percent sure it was a VS four ten because you know, it's Vanquish. But yeah, I'm pretty sure he was running it if I, I if I remember watching his builds, he had to cut out I think like the like the middle of the bench sheet, and he just made like a little tunnel for it. Sure, sure. Yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a tough question. You know, that's almost not even fair. Yeah, it is. If you're sitting here looking at everything, it's like, I mean, it it, it just depends on on your mood at the moment. I mean, I guess that's why I grab the TRX4 all the time is because I can do both with it. Because I beat the living crud out of that poor truck. Yeah. But then I could see a pile of rocks, you know. You just put it in four-wheel drive and play around on the rocks. Yeah. Yeah, the, the VS410, like, it, it's been calling my name for a long time. And I'm, you know, like, when when Jason first got them, when, like, the Origin came out, he was like, hey, man, like, if you want to take a kit home and build it for the YouTube channel, like, go for it. And I, like, I almost took him up on it, and I, I kind of regret not doing it. Just because I, I, I literally probably would have been, like, one of the first people to do it. Because it was right. I mean, obviously, like, the, the team drivers and whatever had videos out already. But nothing small time. So I was like, oh, that might be a good idea. But I never took him up on it. And I kind of kind of wish I did so I could I could drive it. And he was like, yeah, bro, like, let me know. Like, whatever you want to do with it. Like, so we'll, the, the, we'll do it. When you open the box, the presentation, I mean, the build is so nice. Oh, on yeah. It. Without a doubt. Vanquish. Vanquish is just that, like. There, it, it's the caviar the caviar of rc world like it's like it, it's pricey like it's you're not gonna want that like you're not gonna get that super like crazy but it's just like it's just fine like you know like a fine wine like you know what i mean oh yeah yep and you, you get what you pay for with that that's for sure for sure and, and it's crazy because when i first started here like and to this day like i i don't have too many vanquish products because like i have so i lied i have one car i have a frame <laughs> that i have that i like want to build up really nice and it just it, it, and i'm like okay i want to get you know rock jocks for it because i think those would fit the build but then i'm like but then i'd have to get a full vanquish transmission because i want it to fit and i want then i'd have to get this and then i'm just like it's it's yeah. a it's a it's a snowball effect of just like if you get one vanquish part like it, it kind of makes a lot of the other ones look like Dookie. And granted, there, there, there's a lot of brands out there that are, like, pretty comparable or, you know, almost, you know, damn near up there with Vanquish. Um, I think Vanquish just takes it, like, just a step above most. And, and they uh, hold that spot. And, you know, I don't think they're ever going to lose that spot, at least not in the near future. Yeah. They've got some really nice looking stuff. Yeah. And so... Yeah, it, it just it, it, it's a tough one with Vanquish. Like I'm like I, I want to do it, but then I I know that it's it's gonna hurt my pockets. Oh yeah, I'd love to get a set of those Rock Jocks. I've I've never had a pair. I've never owned a pair of Vanquish axles. <coughs> that's I, I, that. yeah. I've I've never owned a pair of Vanquish axles, and and that's something that I'm like, I think one day I'm just gonna pull the trigger and just do it. But I'm like you know I can I can get. Like, you know, I have, like, the, the uh, what's it called? Like, the C-Hubs and the Knuckles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stage 1 kit, that's what I was looking for. I have Stage 1 kits, but I don't have anything that's, like, full-on axle, fully built. And I think that's why I want the VS410, because I'm like, that'll just knock out everything I need. Right. That that's That's the way I was looking at it, too. That's the only complete vanquish axle i have is what came on the origin i have lots of bits and pieces my bomber jeez that thing has got vanquish everything except for the axle housings there's vanquish everywhere else on it yeah and i thought about oh, like it's, it's got the reef sway bar on it yeah i thought about well yeah you got you got to have that i still have my and i, I still have those reefs the so 
uh, Reef yes. every once in a while comes out with some custom anodizing on his stuff. Like it's a, it's the same stuff you can get. It's the same high quality product, but he goes the, the a step above and he'll make like a like a splatter anodizing pattern, and it's just this cool, like just cool look to it. But but the man knows what he's doing, and he only makes like five at a time, and he's like, nope, never making any more again. And he sticks to that. He really does stick to that. Like I, I'm like, nah. He'll he'll see how much people want him, and he'll make more. Like no worries. Like nope, he won't. So I caught him at, I think it was at, uh, at RC Four Wheel Drive. I was like, RC4 yo, RC Four Wheel Drive. Yeah. We were talking about it, and he was like, yeah, I have a, a set of a, like American flag themed ones, and I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, um, I made some servo shields with the same pattern, and I looked it up, and they were, and then he was like, yeah, I have sway bars with that pattern. I'm like, well. What do you like? What like you have them on you? He's like, no, they're back at the shop. I'm like, okay, well, how much? And he's like, oh, this is how much. You know, the, this is what they cost. And then he was like, puts anodizing, whatever. He's like, so he he told me, and I was like, done. And he's like, yeah. He's like, I only have two left. I was like, you have two. And so I was like, here's here's double the money. I want both of them. And so right. I was like, how many did you make? And he was like, I literally only made five. And that made me so happy because I've never been that guy that's like in that exclusive crowd because I, I most of the time it's because i'm never quick enough to something <laughs> but right. those were slick yeah yeah and but that's yeah, like the one he time a, he had a oh man i want to say it was green and black type splatter like that man, uh, yeah oh I yeah on that. yeah i i, I, I saw that those that. those were cool yeah I, I don't have anything green otherwise i would have picked up but i want i want a servo shield with the american flag like look to it but i'm like man like I gotta probably find one. Like someone's gotta sell it to me, and Somebody's who knows how much? Is, how who knows how much? Because I, yeah, because I, I I looked at it and I was like, I have two. What am I gonna do with two? So so I actually ended up putting one on my axial Yeti trophy truck, and then oh, the, yeah. yeah, the other one is gonna go on my SMT10, which actually originally I was gonna put it on the one that I have now, but with the with the raw builders kit coming out. <laughs> I think I might just have to get a brand new car for this. For that's how nice these sway bars are. That like my because mine's beat. You know what I mean? It's right. painted. It's beat. Like the cage is painted. The cage is broken. And I'm like, that's just not doing it justice. Like no matter how how much I like spit shine it, it's never gonna look brand new. And and like I need to take some like really nice pictures with this sway bar on. And I wanted to win race, so I'm gonna actually end up building another SMT10. Nice. Yeah, they did just come out with that builder's kit. That's right. Yeah, was, yeah, like late last year, and and it looks really nice. It, it and it for the price and for what you get. Yeah, it, I don't think you could beat that. Yeah, I put both the uh, front and rear reefs on my SMT. Yeah, I think I might end up putting those in the front and getting like a set of black or something for the rear, or maybe like a silver uh, for the rear. Mm. Um, yeah, because yeah. I, I think definitely needs the dual sway bars, but. But I had to kind of split them up because I'm like, I thought about putting them both on one, but I'm like, no, like, I got to spread the love here. I got, I got right. something else I need sway bars. And so, yeah, and, and those reef sway bars are, are amazing. I, I love them. They've made such a difference yeah. on that trophy truck. Yeah. Have you ever put a sway bar on any of your crawlers? No, everybody keeps putting them on there. And I'm like, that's that's a one to one thing. Like, I, so, like our, our Jeep has, has sway bars uh, in the front and back. But, like, I, I've never been able to, like, the, I couldn't do it on my SCX-10 just because there's nowhere to mount it. And I'm like, damn it, somebody figured it out. And it actually, like, I've heard it works really well. Uncle Schultz, like, swears by it. Yeah, I know. That's, I heard him talking about it. And I'm like, oh, I want to I wanna try it on something, you know. I think I've got an old plastic one laying around here. This is stock uh, axial sway bar off of something. Let's see if I can get it on one of these rigs and try it out. Yeah, I think I'm gonna end up because I I kind of don't want to mess with my my element that I have now, so I might get a builder's kit and put an IFS on it and put the sway bar in the rear. I think that might be the way to go. Or you can get two for four ninety nine. I know, but I want the builder's kit. <laughs> I don't <laughs> no, know why. That's right. That's right. I don't know why the builder's kit just like calls me. Like I want to build something. Uh, I didn't get to build my builder's kit, so <laughs> so I want to well, build one. Yeah, that's true. Plus that'll keep me busy. Next on my list is still the uh, the DR10. Oh, I actually I forgot to ask. I was talking to Jason today about it. I forgot to ask him if he had them in stock. Oh, if they dropped yet? Because I know a lot of the stores are getting them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
I told him to hold me one, even though I don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have to figure it out somehow. Hey, you gotta, you gotta. No one, no one will question where that money comes from. Gotcha. I mean, it... <laughs> I, have to ask my, I have to ask my main sponsor in yeah. the house. You gotta. We'll, we'll, we'll get some pictures of uh, Jeff doing some more extra chores around the house, and you know, <laughs> wearing an apron, and you know, vacuuming the kitchen. Like just making yeah. shit up, like, "Hey, babe, I, I vacuumed the the ceiling. Like, can I, <laughs> can I get this extra can toy?" I get the DR10. Yeah. Hey, babe, you remember that car that Uncle Schultz had, and I showed it to you at Crawlmasters? <laughs> yeah, that's the one that's out now. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I like to, like, exaggerate a little bit on the importance of getting a car. I think that kind of helps ease, ease her mind a bit. <laughs> I'm like, babe, like, look, like, like, it's an exclusive. Like, I, like, I'm, I'd be one of the first people to get it. Like, you know how much, you know how good this would be. Like, we could, we could do this and that. And she's like, oh, really? Like, and I'm like, I mean, probably. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, well, you know. I mean, like, yeah. like in theory, but like, I can't guarantee anything, cause then, cause then when it doesn't happen, like, it doesn't become this like big thing, then you look like an asshole. So, you know, I try to limit those times. Yeah, but you got the car. Well, yeah, then you're an asshole with a DR10. So. It, yeah. it, it's, it, it's, it's, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know? whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Oh, uh oh, we're losing. Sorry about that. No worries. So what's, so what's, what's new in, in, in your world before this was going on? Like, what, you know? I know, you know. Man, I don't even know if I remember. It's crazy, man. This thing Back, uh, made me lose track of everywhere I was. You know, I was I was on the hunt because it, it was sponsorship season right before this all all went down. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gen A's. Gen A's, yeah. Gen A's yeah. picked you up, picked me up. They they picked up a lot of good guys in the crawler community here in California. They did. There's it, a couple from up my way. Yeah, it, it's actually really interesting, kind of seeing. Companies taking taking more into the the crawler scene, you know what I mean. And I'm not talking yeah. about like obviously like I don't know, I'm trying to think like you know there's companies that that like Reefs Reefs is caters to a lot of the crawler guys. Not not only the crawler guys, but you know like the guy's got a full blown crawler course in his in his in his house like in his warehouse. So he's gonna love the right. crawler scene. But like companies like like Proline, companies like like Gen Zace where they're they're all across. Like Gen Z doesn't just do RCs. They do, I mean, they do drones. Those are RCs, but they do like airsoft and do do things like that. Where, you know, yeah. Like I think maybe two or three years ago, companies like that wouldn't touch crawlers. Like they'd have no. maybe one, but that's because they also race track or you know what I mean. Like they were worried about like like wins and they were worried about like and and if you were a crawler guy, like what I noticed with with these companies that were that were nationwide, not just small time mom and pop. I, I noticed that it was a lot of the guys that that went to like Sorka events or things like that. And right, right. I think a lot of people are catching on to the the California vibe where we don't we don't compete, but but we have a good time doing things. And when you when you're out on the trail and you're having a good time, people notice. Right. You know, and then you know the best way to have a good time is to have a a rig that's that's gonna get you there. You know what I mean? And that's where, dependable. Yeah, and if you're if you're passing a guy who's been stuck on the same obstacle, and he's sitting there pissed off, and you're sitting there listening to music and having a great time, and like, well, crap! Like, how come his car is doing this? And then they start to notice, like, you know, that's it's it's almost as it, I don't want to say it's the same as like being a competitive racer or anything like that, because I don't think any anything can really compare to that. But you know, it's got that same effect of like I want to run what that guy's running. You know, and, right. and I think they're starting to take notice, and and not just this year, but like over the like the last year, I think that that's that's been a big deal. Yeah. Sorry, I got distracted back there. I was listening. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries, no worries. <laughs> I got the garage door open, so I was watching cars coming in and out. There you go. There you go. Yeah, but like I said, like because I think, like I think a lot of the sponsorships that I have now, I've applied for in the past, and. Not much has changed about me, you know. I, I'm still this running the same kind of events, as as yep. far as like last year. I, last year, I, from when I started, like duh, like I, I didn't do anything. But like I've I've I have I haven't really done anything extra. 
but like they've noticed like oh like this guy's doing this and like people like i'm not i'm nobody you know but people say hey like like that that drift car is pretty fast like what are you running what's an hpi it's got this it's got castle you know it's got whatever it's got a gen zace battery uh-huh. and they're like well okay cool i want that and so people are noticing and and i'm thankful for that because i'm telling you the same same companies that 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 you know are, are sponsoring me now wouldn't have touched me last year and that and i think the crawler scene in california is definitely becoming more prominent and it's being viewed more like people want to kind of do that more yeah I mean, we've got so many opportunities here in california i mean we're we're in a perfect spot you want to go the, to the beach you know i drive a half hour that way i want to go to the snow you know i drive a couple hours that way i mean we've got it all right here for sure and that's something that i tell people all the time because i mean you know i i have family in a whole another country i have friends across the nation and people always say dude like come to texas texas is you can get a four-bedroom house for you know one of those like uh cereal top boxes you know the box tops you know oh, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it, it's it's dirt cheap out there and i'm like okay cool and kendra actually went out there for three months for her mm-hmm. one of her internships and oh my god i've never felt more landlocked in my life like i i, I didn't even oh, live out there man. with her i was out there for like a weekend at a time and yeah. there was nothing to do it literally so i drove her there we drove from california from san jose california to san antonio texas it was 26 hours, and as soon as we got within 10 hours of of San Antonio, I don't think I saw a mountain at all. I, I don't oh. think I saw a hilly, grassy area at all. I saw nothing. It was the same elevation. The closest beach was like eight hours away, and I think it was Corpus Christi. And I don't think okay. I've ever seen anybody go, guys, like, I want to go surfing Corpus Christi. Like, you know what I mean? I've never heard that. <laughs> you know, and no, right. like, if you're from Texas and you're listening to this, like, you know, no, no disrespect, but it's just, I'm no, accustomed to the, to the way of life, like you're saying. You know, I've, I, like, I like the snow, but I don't do snow. Like, I don't shovel nope. driveways. I don't do all that. Nope. But if I want to, like, we can go up to our cabin in the winter and spend a weekend. Right. You know? And I'm, I'm a beach bum. You're you're a beach bummy. We get it. Like oh, yeah. I, like I if if I can't hear the ocean at least once a week, and you know there was a point where I was actually working in Monterey, California, which if you don't know has some of the most beautiful like surfing that you could ever do. Uh-huh. And driving up, driving up, and just rolling down my windows and that salt air hitting you in the face is is the, one of the best moments oh, by absolutely. far. Absolutely, absolutely. Trish and I got to try to get out. We, you know, we we're so close to Bodega Bay. I mean, Man, when when we were able to, we would just drive out there every weekend. Oh yeah. You know, stop by, grab a cup of clam chowder, go sit up at the Bodega Head, eat it, and then cruise back home. I mean, it's uh, you're definitely paying for it living here. Oh, but, without a doubt. But I think it's worth it. Well, oh, absolutely. I, I don't think it's not worth it yet. If that makes sense, you know what I mean. To some, because to some people it's not worth it. To some people it's like, oh, it's just right. a beach. To, you know what I mean? And you know, I, I especially like I live in San Jose. Like the rent here is. I, I worked in property management for a long time, and I was renting one bedroom apartments for over three thousand dollars a month. And to some people, yep. they're like, no way in hell am I paying that. I got a five bedroom house, and I pay two dollars a week for it. You know what I mean? And yeah, right. You know, but I, I, to me, it hasn't gone to the point where it's not worth it. Like I'll pay whatever it takes. To have my beach, I'll pay whatever it takes to have, you know, uh, Mount Diablo that I can go to, to I, so I can have, you know, Bean Hollow, so I can have the Rubicon, and you know, I can have all these things. And not only that, like everybody's here that matters to me. To right. me, you yeah. know, I don't want, I don't want to take away from other companies. Here. Yeah, like all my family's in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like my so my my family came here, I think in the '80s. My family came here in the '80s. Uh, and my mom came here pregnant with me in 93. So we settled here. We've been here. And I don't plan on ever leaving here. And I think, obviously, that's because I've been here my whole life. And I think if I grew up in Texas, then I'd probably love Texas. You know? Because, sure. I mean, our, our I mean, friends in Texas for sure love Texas. Uh, yeah. I mean, I tried to leave here. I I'd, I'd moved up to Oregon for a couple years. That's right. It's beautiful up there, but it just didn't work out. Yeah. So... I came back. 
and that's something because we've we've considered moving moving away and we've considered doing all these things but then we're like but then is it worth it is that worth it you know what i mean is the is the you know thousand bucks we're saving in rent is it worth not having a beach or is it worth living somewhere with you know like bad weather six months out of the year you know i don't know where we yeah. wherever, but you know it, and it's not not Shoot, yet, even even you know, well yeah not, not yet, yet to not you yet. in your life exactly and you know we're still pretty young and we're we're we're, we're young professionals out in the workforce and so we, we <laughs> <laughs> luckily we're we're well off and with Kendra graduating if she can figure out her because mama rona has got all the board certifications so she can't get certified as an occupational therapist until this is all over but it, once she figures that out like we'll both be you know about the median income for for this area in order to survive and i, I you know we we could afford things now and we could probably afford a little bit more later. So I don't foresee us having issues living here. Um, so we're, we're sticking to the California lifestyle as long as we can. Yeah. Uh, me the same. Me the same. Yeah. Just got to get back to work. Yeah. Hopefully that's coming up. Uh, May 4th is our possible date of return. So nice. Nice. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. I know this this whole thing's got everybody crazy. I, I'm I'm we're struggling because our wedding is in August and we have like two weddings that that we were supposed to go to that were already postponed or canceled or whatever. So we're kind of at that. I, you know, I, it's weird, and I, I'm gonna kind of go off the RC topic right now, but I need to vent because because nobody Do told it. me that there was rules to weddings. You know what I mean? <laughs> like nobody told me that. You're supposed to send your your save the dates at a certain date, and you're supposed to send your wedding invitations at a certain date. But apparently, yeah, like it's it, you're late on all that. No, so our save the date we well, we, so originally, so I'm a big San Jose Earthquakes fan. The mm -hmm. like I'm a soccer guy. I'm, I'm, if you this is a podcast, go to Black Turtle Garage uh, on YouTube, and you'll see that I am brown as f. I'm 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 as brown as it gets. So I'm, I'm a soccer guy, right? And I'm brown. I'm not a soccer guy. Yeah, but like we're different kind of brown. Oh, okay. Like Yohablo, man. Like you know what I mean. Like <laughs> this is a little different. But my bad. No, but but I'm like full on Hispanic, and so I love my soccer. I'm a season ticket holder for the San Jose Earthquakes. You know I love my quakes, and our so we were actually supposed to have our our save the date shoot with Mario from MZ Tiny Truck Picks. I think that's his thing. Mm -hmm. um, Obi Juan Kenobi. On Instagram, go check him out. Takes amazing pictures of literally every event here in the area. Um, he actually yep. agreed to do our our save the date and possibly our wedding pictures. So that's kind of cool. Oh wow! Nice. But we had actually gotten uh, the San Jose Earthquakes to open up the stadium for us and let us do our, our save the date at the stadium. Oh no way! Which was so cool. It, I mean, we had to pay a little bit because they were like, you know, we can't just open it for free. And I'm like, I get it. You're a business, whatever. Um, so. We were going to pay that. Mario was going to come take the pictures. They were going to have, like, our name up on their big screen. Like, you know, when they, they have new signings, they have them stand out with their jersey. And, you know, and, and it says, welcome to San Jose or whatever. But we were going to have our save the day on the big screen. And we went out and got custom jerseys with our with my last name because it's going to be her last name. And the number 20 because it was Sarsano 2020, right? Because that's the year we're getting married. And right. Mama Rona came and they're like, nope, sorry, we can't do it. We can't open up the stadium. So we're like, okay, cool. And then, uh, if you don't know this, Mario is old as hell. <laughs> so, so you know, he, he there's a little bit of concern. We don't want him to catch the Rona. So, so he's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to take it kind of kind of mellow. And so I was like, you know, I respect that. So now we don't have a photographer. We don't have a venue. So we didn't take those. And I've heard it about every day for the last week or the last, the last Corona. So <laughs> the last couple of months mm -hmm. of, well, we haven't taken this. And some bridal magazine somewhere said, if if your wedding's 90 days away and my wedding's four months away, you should think about canceling it because that's the cutoff date for invitations. And I'm like, well, you know what? If, <laughs> if, if Vanity Fair or whatever magazine that was wants to come and pay me back for my deposit, then they can cancel our wedding. But I don't care. I don't care what it. I don't care if I have to have 500 iPads there and everybody's FaceTiming. Like I'm getting married August 29th. That's happening. That'd be, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, like it's Virtual literally, wedding. it's literally I mean, like we've suck, done so much but... work to this for this wedding, and I'm not letting right. a magazine tell me to cancel this thing. No, no. 
but yeah, so you read. yeah, nobody nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows when our date is. Nobody knows where we're getting married. Well, our family knows. Like, you guys know we've told you and Carmel, uh, you know, we're, we're getting married. And so we've told the important people that are close by. Everybody that's coming to our wedding is important because it's a family wedding. But right. the ones that are here and the ones that we see every day or we talk to, like, I talk to you, like, probably two to three times a week. So, well, you know, you guys know. And we've told you the dates. But we haven't sent out anything. So she's freaking out. And. You know, it's, it's it's freaking me out, man. I didn't know there was rules to this. Yeah. It's, uh, it, I mean, it depends. It depends on on a lot. I did it twice. I didn't go yeah. by those rules. Well, yeah. Well, I also... And and, and I'm going to... I don't know if we should really, like, disclose the full... The full... Uh, what it entails to be part of the club. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> so I, think I know where you're going. Yeah, yeah, so so you know to kind of let let the listeners uh know. So we have this little inside joke here at at ASD Crawlers and we didn't notice this. We've all been friends for years. I've known Oscar and Brandon since before ASD Crawlers was a thing. I've known Jeff for almost as much as the same amount of time. And then ASD Crawlers became a thing and we <laughs> We were all sitting <laughs> sitting at the campfire at AAC last year, and our buddy uh, Bobby sits there and goes, Hey, guys, you know what I just noticed? And everybody just looks up. And <laughs> none of the wives were there except for Jules. Jules was sitting behind me, and I didn't know she was there, but she heard this whole conversation, and she's like, Yep, I'm married to one of these idiots. And she, I think she might have said that out loud. <laughs> But he goes, like, we're we're all brown as fuck and married to white girls. Yeah. And we literally all looked around at each other, except for Adam. Adam's, Adam's our token white boy. Um, That's right. Um, but we all looked at each other and laughed and we're like, oh, my God, that is so true. Yes. And so yes, we we yes, were we is. were laughing. So ever since then we've called ourselves we're we're part of the club. We're we're the we're the Brown Brothers with with beautiful white women club, right? And and, yep. and we love it because because you know my my credit score went up fifteen percent just by dating Kendra. So you know we, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so and you know like Hispanic weddings like you, we don't do that. Like you go out, you have you have the same lady that planned your sister's skin say she's gonna plan your wedding and she does everything. You know what I mean? But that don't fly with white girls. Like that doesn't happen. Vanity Fair. Yeah, Vanity Fair tells you what, what's what's supposed to happen at your wedding. <laughs> so, if if you're thinking about joining the club, boys, just know you're in for that. And it's not Don't bad. It's not bad, but just Vanity Fair. Yeah, if you see Vanity Fair, start showing up to your house, burn it. Yep. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't. I didn't have to deal with that. Yeah, uh, we didn't have to deal with that. Yeah, but luckily, luckily, I haven't had a bridezilla, so that's good. That's good, and I think, I think that's something that all the ASD ladies shares, is, is that they're all really chill, you yeah. know, and they all get along, for the most part. At least I haven't seen anything, but <laughs> but they all get along, and, and they're just they 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 know the kind of guys that we are, and they 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 let us have our fun. They just let us go. Yeah, they, them up. they they have they have a leash on us, but not a, but it's a long one. You know, it's one of those that like, you know, like like those little chihuahuas on a on the retractable leashes, but they're 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 long. Yep. And, and I'll never yep, admit yep. this to Kendra's face, um, so I'm gonna make sure she doesn't listen to this part of the podcast. But it's true, you know, and 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 we know where we play, and and, and it allows us to have a good time. And you know, I, I think that's something in RC that a lot of guys don't don't figure out is. Like, it's not about, like, you don't have to get your wife into this, but you just, like, it, and especially if, like, you're new to that, like, just find someone that, that's going to let you be. You know what I mean? Yep. Like. If you want to go geek out in the garage for an hour, it's nice to know that uh, you're, you're able to go do that. Yeah, because cause every guy out there needs needs a release, you know, and it's. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is a This is a family-friendly show, sir. But no, everybody, yeah, everybody, I need, everybody needs advice, and and I, you know, whether or not you want to admit it, like you need that. And some people, it's not a very good advice. It's you know, it could be alcohol, it could be drugs, but you know, this is this is our stress relief. This is what gets us away from the world. Like when this and soccer for me, but RC does it a lot. When I'm wrenching on RC, I don't think about my work life. I don't think about my stress. I just think about my tiny truck, 
And I yeah. think, yep. I think finding someone that understands that and that I don't want to say doesn't get in the way of it, but like that will let you have that vice instead of taking that away from you and forcing you to find another one, you know, then, and I think that's good. And, I, and I, obviously it, there's, there's give and take. Cause you don't want to be that guy that like you say, yeah, this is my vice, but you're spending $2,000 a week on RC parts when you're only making a thousand dollars a month, then, you know, there's issues there, but you know, yeah, then, then you got to figure something yeah. out there. But there's, you know, you got to, it's like that give and take. Yeah. I mean, we, we both have our things. I, I RC and she crochets. I mean, yeah. Crawl Masters, she was sitting there yep. with Kendra crocheting and taking yep. money. Yep. Yep. It's nice. Exactly. We both got our things. Yeah. I think Kendra's got her, her iPad games. She's, she's, she's a, you know, uh, she grew up on The Sims, so she oh, yeah. that that's her that's her thing, and she forgets about about it for like a year or so, and then I'll go out and buy a game, and she's with me, and then she says, "Oh my God, Sims came out with a new game," and so then here we go, and now she that recently happened right before, right right when Corona happened, I was like, okay, I can't RC, I can't play soccer, so I'm, I need to go out and buy some games. So I went out and bought Call of Duty. I went out and bought FIFA, and. So then it happened. Sure enough. Oh my God. Sims four. So I bought it. For, so no. So hear me out. So I bought it for my PS four. And then the only version they had in the store was the one with like the expansion bundles. So it was double the price because it had like three extra maps or whatever it is that the Sims has. Cause I haven't played that since I was like five. And she goes and finds it for free on her iPad and hasn't touched the one on the PlayStation four. I think she played once. Oops. And I'm like, are you? Like, mm, but, but you know, giving her her vice, giving her. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Yeah, I hate to admit, but I've I got stuck on the whole Animal Crossing thing on on the Switch. Oh my god, I don't get don't get me started. I, I I haven't bought that it, game yet. It's pretty fun, dude. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty fun. My that's bad. something you know, me and my oldest have. I've kind of bonded over. He's a big time gamer, and I saw him playing Animal. He was he was at GameStop for the release of it. Nice. So he got it day one, and I was watching him play it. I'm like, oh, this looks kind of cool, because yeah, I, I'm not good at the Call of Duties and any of that stuff, but this looked more my speed. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I'm I've put some serious hours into that game. I, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's and it's 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 your way of connecting with them, and that's that's like I said, it's it's like RC. You know, it gives you something to connect with someone. It gives you some some way to relieve the stress, and you know, whatever it may be, then it, if it works, it works. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. <laughs> yeah, man. Um. So there was. Hold on. Oh snap! Sorry, I was uh trying to talk to oscar and see if we can get him on here but he's actually in the air right now so he's up in uh he's i think oh, he's i think he's headed he's, to az yeah it's the weekend so he's headed to az yeah he's a traveling yeah no worries um oh man i made me lose my train of thought so what what in the in this in a corona free world i know you like corona bodega world. so the, oh, yeah. the, Let's try and uh, we'll try and hit that two-hour mark. We're at one forty-five right now. I think we got another fifteen minutes in us, but let's um. Holy moly! Yeah, two this, hours. The RC hangout, man. It's the place where you can just come in and hang out. And I'm hoping that there's still people listening, and that's fine. And you know, and this is why I like long podcasts because you can pause them mm-hmm. and come back. So, so what I do with podcasts is I'll, I'll listen to them on my drive to work. And I used to have a podcast that I listened to, um, and it was the exact time of my commute. Um, and then my commute actually got cut in half. So now I listen to half the episode on my way to work and half on the way home. And so yeah. hopefully there's someone out there with an hour commute that's uh, still enjoying this. Oh, that's me. Um, when I go. get back to work. There you go. I got um, that commute. So let, let, let's talk about your favorite places to go. I know you got Bodega Bay, but what's in California? Give me your Point top three. Arena. Your your top three. Top three? Top three places to, to crawl. Let's go with crawling. Oh, to crawl. Oh, goodness. Bodega Bay. Okay. that's Is that number one? Yeah. Anything on the coast. 
Bodega Bay, Point Arena, when Trish and I go out to the lighthouse, there's a lot of nice little spots out there. Um, number three, Diablo. It's super nice up there. Yeah, for the sure. Views. For sure. I think if, if I had to pick... Oh, you man. know, I, I, I really did like... Uh, Bean Hollow? Well, I'm 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 totally losing Pigeon Axel Point? Fest oh. two years Cisco ago. Cisco Grove. Um, yeah, Cisco Grove. Okay. Bro, that place was so cool. I haven't I haven't been to, to Cisco Grove. I've actually never been to an Axial Fest, so I, I can't I can't really say say there. Mm. Um, no, but I, I'd say Wow, I, it's my own question and I'm and I slipped myself. But right. Diablo's actually in my top three. Uh, mostly because it was my first Big crawl spot. Um, uh -huh. I love that. Um, Bean Hollow has some really cool spots, but it can get a little crowded, but it's definitely up there as well. Um, and I'd say, um, what is it? Bear Lake? Wherever Crawl for Cure is. That's oh, a good spot. Yeah. I, I don't know the name. That place yeah. is really nice. So wherever Crawl for Cure is, I think that's probably my second one. I'd say Diablo number one, just because it's nostalgia and because... All right, we know that plays really well, especially because of Crawl Masters. But you know, that's a whole. That, I could I could have a podcast on Crawl Masters 2017, <laughs> just on its own. Or is that 20? That's 2018. 2018. 18, 2018. Yeah. I 2018. Think so. Yeah, I I could have a podcast on that one on on its own. But yeah, I think Diablo, then Bear Lake. I, I'm gonna go with that name, but I'm sure it's wrong. Go ahead and let me know in the comments if if that's wrong. But um. That and then being all I think those are gonna be my my favorite cross spots. Yeah, I yeah. really enjoyed the crawl for your cure. Uh, last year was my first first time being able to make it. What? That place was beautiful. It was a nice little spot. Yeah, it was cool. Um, it's cool to see how big these events have gotten. Um, because I was at crawl for your cure the first two years, and it was okay. like a hundred people, including vendors. And it was like we were on the side of this parking lot, and it was just kind of funky. Like, it, it like it felt to us, it felt like a big event because it was one of the first events that we were like sponsored with with uh, Two Guys Trail Gear, which was uh, my father-in-law's company. But it felt cool to us, and we were like, "Oh man, this is a this is a big deal." And to see how big it's gotten, like you know, how many people have attended. Same thing with Crawlmaster. Same thing with uh, AAC. AAC. You know, to be there from the ground up, like it's it's crazy. It's crazy yeah. to see. Crawlmasters, that that thing took off crazy. <laughs> oh, Crawlmasters, man. And, you know, it's crazy because I, I didn't think it was going to be like that. Uh, uh, as, as much as I have faith in what we do, mm -hmm. I didn't think people were going to like it as much as they did. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I figured we'd have, we, we'd grow because, I mean, people, people know the kind of events that we put up, but people don't know us for having comps. You know what I mean? Right. Yep. And like that first year on Diablo. That was insane. Like to me, to <laughs> me being on the other side, just because just knowing me, like not to do with any of the organization. Like to me, it was a shit show on my end. Cause I was like running up and down. I was out of breath. Like yep. people were looking at me like, you're supposed to know these rules. And I knew them, but I was sitting there going, <sighs> like, yeah, you know, and, and I'm like, fuck, like, people are going to look at and like, this is our judge. Like, like, this is the guy that's supposed to know his stuff. And to have people go like, oh, like, man, like those judges were working their butts off. Oscar and Brandon were running everywhere and like, like they appreciated it. And yeah. that was something that I didn't expect to happen just because from, you know, other events. And like, I, I thought people would, I know the way these communities can go. And like, if you do something wrong, they'll eat you up about it. And, that, and that's just yeah. a fact. But the fact that everybody appreciated it and saw the hard work that was put into that event and wanted more, that was, that was crazy to me. I'm like, holy, like we're doing something here. Like, like, you know, at, at this point we had already had our first AAC and that one didn't, it went well as far as raising money, but there, there was some incidents, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it didn't yeah. go off a hundred percent according to plan. And I was like, man, like. We're, we're like we're trying to grow something here i want to make sure it goes well and and for people to accept us in the community the way they have like it just it it, it makes me happy and i'm like and it, it really reinforces 
the idea that we're we're doing the right thing here. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's all about the cause. Exactly. You know, and it's and that's all about the cause. You know, I've been I've been part. You know, I've never been like a. a you know, I don't want to say I have a huge part in what we do, but like I, I've never been as like as big into into a cause as much as like as much as ASD has have been involved. Like I've been, you know, because breast cancer awareness has been a big deal. My mom's a survivor, and yeah, mine as well. And I've I've been part of events. I've been I've been going to events. I've you know I've done the runs. I've done like the social media part for people. I've done the pictures. I've done the videos, but I've never been part of like you know like we'll have our our ASD meetings where we try to decide things and. I've I've never this is this is the first time I've ever been like that into it, and mm-hmm. like I was like man like like I don't want to mess this up like I I want to I want to do good for our cause and 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 you're right it's all for the cause and and what I noticed is every person that's got you know our cool little shirts has that in mind and I think that's what yep. made what's made us so successful is the fact that that we're there for the cause and and that that's our priority. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, like when I go to events, and I'll, I'll I'll put in things for the raffle, or I'll put in things for whatever. And I've done three AACs now, no two. I've helped out with three, but I was I've only attended two. I've, I was at the first one, and I was at last year. I missed the one before. Um, because it always it always lands on my grandma's birthday. So then this was a year that I was like, nope, I, I'm not missing it. Um. And and I, I, that was that was a whole, you know, bargaining point with grandma. It was a, I, I had to I had to. She was like, I need you to schedule this. Then when you're gonna see me, when you're gonna do this. And I'm like, all right, grandma. Like I got you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. you know? I got you. And so so I finally got her to 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 give me the okay to to miss her birthday as long as I postponed it. And uh, like, it didn't occur to me until this year until Brandon brought it up. He was like, hey, bro send me over like the black turtle logos and we'll put it on on the banner and stuff. And I was like, you know, like, Oh snap. Like, like, you know, I, like I've never thought about that. You know, like I've, to me, like at, at ASD crawl at like, and sometimes even like crawl for cure. Cause we're, we're pretty heavily involved with have crawl for cure. Like we're like, we do the raffle, like we don't do the raffle, but I mean, if, if you've been to crawl for cure, we're, you've we're seen the blue shirts, anyway you've, you've, you've seen the shirts and, and we, we're we're out there like you can see us and we're we're helping them out as much as we can, um, but when I when I put that shirt on like it's that like that's that's the shirt I wear like that's the hat I wear. I'm not I'm not Eric the sponsored driver. I'm not Black Turtle Garage. I'm I'm an ASD crawler, and yeah. that then that comes above all. And I was like, no, nah, like it's cool, bro. Like this is like my logo is on there. You know what I mean? My logo is ASD crawlers for this weekend. You know, and that's that's what it is. Like if I want that recognition, I want the recognition to go to the club. And I think that's a mentality that we all share. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I like, I honestly think that's why we've been so successful because people see that and that those are causes that people want to get behind. Yep. Absolutely, man. I just had a Trish sighting. Oh, yeah. Oh, she snuck out here for something. There we go. I can, I can hear Kendra hovering out in the hallway. So I don't know if she's coming here and I'm like, like where you at? But yeah. I told her I was like, "Hey, I'm recording the podcast, so just uh, shoot me a text before you go in." I, I need to get one of those cool little red lights for my door. Turn it on when it's when we're live. I think I've uh, got the I've got this one for the ham radio. Hold on. Oh. Let me see. I don't, can you see it? Oh, I actually like that. He's got an on air sign because uh, this is a an audio only podcast uh you know you kind of forget because we're we're facetiming oh, yeah. right now to be able to see you know to be able to communicate with each other but he's got a uh, an on-air sign with his uh ham radio call sign That's which, cool. which is pretty cool so so ham radios and, and rc come come hand in hand and you know jeff Afa over here is our our asd crawlers radio man so we we go to him with all the ham radio questions and something i want to kind of t- touch base on you know to kind of send us off here but talk about your your call sign there's a cool story behind that oh yeah um well i i guess the whole ham radio thing started when i saw that we were using ham radios at our events i'm like hey we probably shouldn't be using these <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i was like you know i'm gonna i'm gonna get my license so i looked into it and it's it's really not that hard uh study a little bit went down got my basic ham radio uh call sign um 
my grandfather and grandmother were both ham radio operators and my grandfather's call sign was actually available so i applied to receive his his call sign and was granted it so i now have my grandfather's call sign which is w6lge pretty cool yeah and that, that, so that's i have cool. a lot of little items from my mom that my that she's kept from uh my grandfather that she's been passing on to me um i have like uh his log book from back then i have my grandmother's log book i have like a tie clip uh with the call sign on it um i have a photocopy of his ham radio license which is kind of i can show it to you i don't you can see it or not. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can see it. That's, that's actually really cool. Yeah, so I got a lot of little things. I've got some pictures of his old radio setup that he had. Wow. That was a trip. So, yeah, now I'm a ham radio operator. That, that That's awesome. See, and that, those are the kinds of things that, like, you know, like I, I live for, you know. And, and that's something that, you know. I haven't really had the chance to do, you know, because, uh, you know, growing up with a single mom and, you know, the only person that I grew up with other than that, like other than like obviously like aunts and uncles, but is uh, is my grandma. So I've never known like my grandpa. I've never known my like, I, I mean, I know my dad, but he lives in a different country. So it's things like that that like I like love. I love those kinds of stories. I love hearing about like, you know, and, and the fact that it kind of came through RC, like it had like a little bit of a connection to RC because, yeah. you know, that's what, what made you get the ham radio. It's just like that just, you know, it makes it even cooler, you know, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, I want to hear those stories. So if you have a story like that, this, so this first episode, I'm going to upload it to YouTube. I want it to be available to everybody. I don't want you to have to download an app, but our episodes going forward are going to be going on different uh, platforms. So I'm hoping to get us on Spotify. I'm hoping to get us on Podbean and, uh, Apple Podcasts, because those are the, the main three that I've seen. Uh, but the first one, and it's a long one, we're going to go ahead and put it on YouTube. Uh, but if you have stories like that, like go ahead and put them down in the comments or you know DM me. Um, you guys can always find us on Instagram. My Instagram is, uh, you can find me at Black Turtle Garage. Um, you can find uh, Jeff at Team Green RC. Yep. Um, so go ahead and you know let us know. Um, make sure you guys follow us on all, all social media. You guys... Uh, follow us here on youtube obviously um this is going to go on the black turtle uh, garage uh, it's actually official black turtle now uh, it's going to go on that youtube but going forward you'll be able to find this one and i'll put this one up on on those platforms as well but you can find us uh under R the rc hangout so um i hope you guys enjoyed this it's, it's been a real blast it's been two hours of of just hanging out um that's I hope crazy it went by so fast it went by super easy and and you know that's that's what happens when you're hanging out um so make sure you guys join us next time um we haven't really decided on a schedule on when we're going to record but we're hoping to have some friends and family on we're going to have brandon and oscar on here obviously next time for sure um, we've talked to them and we want them uh to be on the show because the four of us together is uh it's it trouble a little while it's trouble man it, <laughs> so we'll, we'll have some different people on here and i, I want to make sure that you guys are are able to to partake in that and able to see kind of what I don't I don't want to call it behind the scenes, but what happens when, you know, when we don't have our, our, our shirts on and what, what happens when it's just us kind of, you know, kind of talking. So yeah, guys, uh, that's going to be it for this one. I, I, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know, like, is this worth doing? Like, are we doing something right? Like, you know, like, let us know. Tell something us in the comments. Right, something wrong. What you want us to do. Yeah. And any of that, um, follow me on, instagram follow me on uh like if you want to add me on facebook we i do have a page i'm um it is the rc hangout on facebook there's a group and a page um and we'll be asking questions there you know if you want to ask something to us if you want us to ask, if we'll let you know if we have any guests on the show um so you can ask them questions we'll post that all up so make sure you guys follow us on all social media all that will be linked down below and uh yeah i think i think that's gonna be it for this one you got anything to say to them jeff no, thanks for listening and hanging in there with us. And yeah, give us a give us a follow. You can find me at Team Green RC on Instagram. I have a Team Green RC on Facebook or my regular page. There you That's go. available as well. And as always, or the make, RC Hangout. Yeah, 
Yeah, and as always, guys, make sure you guys give our sponsors a good lo- uh, little bit of love. It keeps us doing what we do. Um, we don't really get paid for it, but, you know, it makes us look good. So make sure you guys check out Gen's Ace. Uh, they make awesome batteries. Reefs RC has always supported us, and I'm sure he'll be one of the first ones. To, he always likes the post when we talk about the podcast. Um, you know, Sticky Kicks RC, Ray, he's been a, an amazing help for us. Um, so JJ Customs. I could say yep. a million things about that man. And he is someone that he has already agreed to be on this show. So make sure you guys stay tuned. We'll be talking to Jason from JJ Customs here in the next couple episodes. So uh, stay tuned, guys. I hope you guys enjoy enjoyed the show. And we'll catch you guys next time. See you Peace. later.